Uh, well, where am I? Hold on. There we go. That was interesting. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, just gonna check a few things here. <laughs> all right, all right. It's all good. It's all good. I know how to do this still. Easy peasy. Um, just gotta check some audio balancing here real quick all right everything's as it was or or, or should be but uh um <clears throat> good evening y'all it's your boy all the tarantula here and we are uh back in beacon pines to continue this mystery and honestly it's it's been on my mind since i put the game down last stream um it's just I've I've had God of War to occupy in the meantime. But uh we're here. We're back at it again. Um we might or may not complete the game in this stream because apparently it's it's not like super long, which you know I would expect that, but I don't know if it's gonna be that short. Supposedly it's like five hours, and I know we've gotten like three in it already, so uh it could be a shorter stream. But we'll see. Um, I hope everyone's evening is going well. Hope everyone is ready to get cozy. As we delve into the mystery of Beacon Pines. Insert uh, X Files theme here. And also, controller not being used. That's. There we go. Now, that. Uh, they did this the last time too, or it's like Six. my controller was plugged in, but it was like, nope, you don't have one. And now it says I do have one again, so it is what it is. Secret layer. Ooh. Summer forged ahead, but the nights only seem to grow colder. Sorry, uh, I gotta make sure I'm in a good good spot where the mic is close enough. But I can also see the chat. I've done a wondrous thing where I moved the chat box to a appropriate spot so that it's no longer blocked by my mic as badly. Luca walked home slowly under the pale starlight. Oh, now I gotta remember what voices was I doing for these characters. Uh oh. Reaching home, he slipped quietly into bed, half dreading what they might discover the next day. I also forgot to upload the first part of this to YouTube. Oops. I guess both parts can go up now at the same time. What time is it? Adventure time. Alright. Well, back to the, the sweater. Oh. Nothing to interact with here. I feel like I'm just a wee bit away from the mic, so it's still gonna adjust here. I know, like super professional. It's not like I totally um lost track of time or something. <laughs> that couldn't be me. Rolo, what on earth is that? Hmm, that ridiculous thing on your head. Oh, this. It helps me think. You're gonna need a lot more of those. Joke all you want. We'll see who's laughing when I crack this case wide open. The coast is clear? Yep. Whatever she's been up to this week, it's been keeping her busy most of the day. Very well. The game is afoot. Luca and Beck rolled their eyes as Rolo strutted across the room. <laughs> If I were a grand, where would I hide my deepest, darkest secrets? Perhaps where you might least expect it. Rolo flung open the cabinet with confidence. Um, I don't think she's gonna keep anything in there. <laughs> Aha! As a veil of dust hit his face. Oh, rip. I think it's safe to assume anything that's dusty isn't what we're looking for. Or maybe that's what she wants you to think. Then again, any good detective knows not to trust their first hunch. 
First hunches are for suckers. <laughs> Yarika. She's lit a fire in order to burn the evidence. She keeps that fire going every day, Rolo. Drat. It may already be too late. Just think of the mounds of documents lost to ash. Okay. I'm gonna stop you right there. Can we just think for a moment? Luca, is there anywhere Grand doesn't want you to go? Yeah. The closet upstairs. So maybe it stands to reason that we should check there first. No dice. It's locked. Well, well, well. Look who stands to reason now. And I have no idea where the key is. If it really is important, then she probably keeps it with her. Anywhere else? She has her berry bushes. Who has ever thought, I'm going to make this important thing uh, and huck it in a bush? True. Anything else? Maybe something out of the ordinary? Well... She is always worried I'll break her fancy dishware in the kitchen. But it doesn't matter anyway, I can't reach the latch. Gonna stack on top of each other. <laughs> I just like children. Alright, Rolo. This is your time to shine. Ah, yes. You've called upon my expert detective skills. And now I shall proceed with... <laughs> hey, this isn't my idea of detective work. Every squad needs a good lockpick. And every good lockpick needs a sturdy head to sit on. This is beneath my standing. Stop complaining and hold still. <laughs> Got it. The three crowded around the hut. <laughs> With the glass doors opened, a perfect porcelain display gleamed in front of them. Their eyes searched for anything amiss, but the only distinct feature was its impeccability. Well, that was anticlimactic. Yeah. I don't really know what we were expecting. Like, oh, hey, let me just yank on this random teacup and... Pulled on one of the teacups. It slanted forward with a hollow click. The entire hutch began to rustle and slide under its own power. Oh, there's always those hidden bookcases, but this is a hidden tea set shelf. Yeah. <laughs> Seems like your gran has been doing some remodeling. Dude, only two types of people have secret lairs. Evil masterminds and superheroes. So which one do we think she is? We're about to find out. And if she comes back while well, that thing's open. Okay, so more of an unhinged conspiracist vibe. Oh, wow. Yeah, this cannot be good. We need to look around before jumping to conclusions. Ah, Walter White is in this game. <laughs> Where's Jesse? He just started it. <laughs> what do you got there? It's my dad. Looks like some of his old medical files. Your dad was a doctor? Well, are you gonna read it? I... Here, let me help. Oh. <laughs> he whistled to himself, barely looking at the text. <laughs> How about you actually read some of it? One sec. Dense documents such as this are a lot like a cheeseburger. It's best to skip straight to the middle. That's where all the meaty bits live. Wow, I had no idea we were in the presence of a permanent scholar in dense documents and cheeseburgers. By all means, proceed. 
Ah, uh, here we are. Follow up examination of Terrence Wilby. Patient shows further signs of paleness and. I know how to read that word. Oh, shit. <laughs> Mal malaise. Malaise. <laughs> Body temperature continues to drop. He now describes soreness of muscles and joints. This is similar to the symptoms exhibited by Mrs. Wilby just a few days past. Still waiting on lab results from Joseph. See? Creepy. Yeah, that's kind of disturbing. Who's Joseph? I think you mean Mr. Travis. <laughs> that's Mr. Nuncreed's name. Wait. There's more scribbled in the margins. Could it be contagious? Mr. Wilby claims the tap water at his home has been contaminated. Perhaps environmental? Lab results only raise more questions. It's like he came back to his report later and made those notes. So it might be related to something else. Here, Ryan looks shaky. I just couldn't help her. This disease, or whatever it is, progresses so fast. And with his wife's passing, Terrence's condition follows close behind. Exacerbated by the loss. Enough is enough. I need to take matters into my own hands. Staring blankly at the cabinet this whole time, spoke softly. What does it say next? Yellow rustled the folder, trying to lose more pages. That's where it ends. What? There has to be more. Luca frantically shoved the remaining cabinet folders, trying to find another labeled Walter. Luca, I think that's the only one. It's alphabetical, see? What did he mean, enough is enough? How did he take matters into his own hands? This is bullshit! Whoa! I was not ready for that. <laughs> well, she sure has kept herself busy. Uh, is your gran a serial killer? Because I'm starting to get a vibe. Don't be ridiculous. Sure, she's just tracking the movements of everyone in town out of the kindness of her heart. Mm -hmm. She put little symbols by some of them. Yeah, but... Mr. Nuncreed has a check mark. The clipboards are all inside a big circle. My moms are both on here. Both with question marks. Gus Valentine has a question mark. Eris has a question mark. That's been crossed out. Uh, Mr. Kerr has a bullseye. The killer has chosen her next victim. We don't know what any of this means. Whatever it means, it's probably not good. Oh. <laughs> what do we have here? Barrels marked caution, explosive, and jam jars? That's enough jam to feed the whole town. What kind of incendiary jam is your grand making? Incendiary! Oh, now we got the power of fire. For later. And uh, let's hope that it doesn't lead to too bad of an end. <laughs> she wouldn't have had me walk around town delivering bombs. Right? Only one way to find out. Spun open a lid and dipped his finger in the jam. Huckleberries. He smacked his lips. A hint of brown sugar. And ink. What? Lolo plunged his hand in the jar, fishing out a soggy slip of paper. E. Aha. Offered the slimy note to Luca and licked his fingers clean. <laughs> <laughs> it's addressed to Mrs. Fratelli. A grand jam gram. It says, "Last night I used the disguise Eris provided to scout the location." The timing window should be possible. Operation Spark Plug is a go. 
Oh man, are they doing a heist? Whatever it is, it can't be good. Some more of a bombshell than a bomb, am I right? You're new here, so I'll let you slide. But I'm the bad joke guy around here. <laughs> Rolo defending his his territory. They crowded around a worn down old map of Beacon Pines. Cool. This looks like a treasure map. Not every old map is a treasure map, Rolo. Yeah, but every treasure map is an old map, you know? He's got a point. <laughs> Can't fault that logic. Look, there's even a pathway drawn on it. It starts at the entrance to town. And if we follow it, it leads right to town square. That's the fountain in the middle of town. What a weird place to hide treasure. Um... Rolo, that doesn't look like treasure to me. The end of the path on that map has the same symbol as those explosives over here. So, it's not hiding treasure. A real bummer. <laughs> as a friend of mine would say, shame. Rolo, what's that thing you've been excited about? For the past month. The festival. Uh, did you just say gulp? This feels like a gulp kind of situation. Everyone will be gathered near the center of town. She's gonna blow up the festival. Not if we stop her. Oh. Uh. What was that? What was that? What was what? No, I heard it too. That was the front door. Which means someone just shut the door. Which means someone's upstairs. Shh, quiet. Hit the lights. Beck flicked off the light. And they became statues in the dark. Oh. Yeah, that's a good description there. Overhead, creaking floorboards bent under statues in the dark. <laughs> the kids looked up, the tilt of their necks following each footfall. Oh god. <laughs> then suddenly it stopped. I mean it, again, if that shelf is still open, um and she sees that, you know, we're all in trouble. Uh oh, that's not even grand then. Hello? A final few footsteps reached the it's Tom Nook. And the voice now echoed down the stairs. <laughs> Anyone down there? Or or uh, Ned Flanders? Yeah, <laughs> Adley Ho. You. Holy shit. I'm not here to hurt anyone. I'm just here to help. Just. At the bottom step, the man paused, squinting to search the room for signs of life. Huh. Yes, it's nothing. Rolo, don't! It was too late. Oh no. Rolo was already inching toward the stairway. Rolo. <laughs> he screeched as he charged toward the shadowy figure. Flaming chicken coop. <laughs> With all his weight, Rolo tackled the man to the ground. Ah man, and he wouldn't have known anyone was down there. <laughs> Rolo hadn't acted. Rolo. Mysterious creepy man? Anyone there? From the dark corner, they saw something move. Well, I didn't know if I had it in me. But there was only one way to find out. Holy crap, Rolo. That was awesome. Wait, did you just kill that person? Luca scrambled to the hunched figure on the ground, pressing his fingers to the man's neck. He sighed with relief. <laughs> 
You sure clobbered him good, Rollo. He's knocked out cold. As Beck flicked back on the light, Luca and Rollo both gasped in stereo. Mr. Tolliver. Chapter 7. Oh. <laughs> the interrogation of Hiram Tolliver. Still unconscious, Mr. Tolliver slumped heavily in a shoddy old chair. Man, poor man. <laughs> His hands were bound with rope. His feet tied with some loose string. The kids huddled in a circle, discussing their plan. One thing was certain. They couldn't just let Mr. Tolliver go. I mean... They needed to know what he was doing fair. at his house. After some deliberation, it was decided. They run the classic good cop, chill cop <laughs> interrogation. Oh man. Yeah, I'm sure that's gonna work. <laughs> I'll handle this, just gotta play it cool. Luca walked calmly to the light switch, flicking it off and on a few times. Light death, light death, light death. <laughs> shook his head, gathering his wits. Golly, I sure got my bell rung. He looked over to find Luca, who returned a calming grin. Hadley ho, neighbor. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Tolliver. This was all a big mistake. Luca, what's going on here? Why do you have me strapped down? No one's fault, really. Rollo just got a little startled. Rollo's here. Rollo and Beck emerged from hiding to give a timid wave. Well, alright. Mistakes happen. You kids gave all I hear I'm a good scare. Let's just get me out of these ropes and call it even. <laughs> Mr. Tolliver, why are you in my grand's basement? I'm here to help, of course. Help with what? What's my grand up to? If you cut me loose, I can show you. How do I know we can trust you? Mr. Tolliver exhaled with disappointment. Luca, have I ever done wrong by you? No. And since your grand moved to town, haven't I been nothing but welcoming? Yeah. So, why would I turn my back on your family now? It's just... All this stuff seems pretty weird. A board with names of people from town. An archive of my dad's old disturbing patient notes. Barrels of explosives. I can explain everything. You just need to untie me. You kids deserve an explanation. Began to slowly loosen the bindings. Mr. Tolliver gently rubbed his wrists. That's a good lad. This will make sense in time. Oh no. He's gonna run. You see, this town has secrets, Luca. A very dark past indeed. Y'all, get ready. <laughs> He's gonna run. Before the kids had even noticed his movement, Mr. Tolliver was at the light switch. Oh no. A pass that must be brought to. Damn. Light. <laughs> Son of a. Darted to the wall and turned back on the lights. It was too late. Rolo confirmed what they all heard. He just locked us down here. Mr. Tolliver's muffled voice came from behind the door. I wasn't lying, you know. This is for your own good. You kids just keep tight down there. And let the adults handle this. They looked bewildered at each other. Oh man, maybe I should have done a muffled... <laughs> Whatever. Play it cool, huh? Not now, Beck. They heard the staccato thump of quick steps exiting the house. The kids looked down in resignation. This isn't how it goes in Hank Atomic. For some reason, they'd always assumed it was up to them to save their town. Luca opened his mouth, hoping to conjure some magical words to make this right. Only a hollow croak escaped. The end. Damn, yo. Got locked in the basement until this whole thing blew over. <laughs> well, we certainly aren't going to find a grand resolution to our tale locked in the basement. Back to the drawing board. Okay. 
Well, we can use Rumble here. We can't use Incendiary anywhere, so this seems to be the first place we can go. Oh, that's right. This all started with saying, hey, why don't you come over and meet Rolo? So... Which means it it would have been bad luck if she did meet Rolo, because that's the fate we just had. Well, kind of. If we had, you know, good cop, bad cop, then, you know, we might have been able to stop him from escaping. Who knows? You sure we can make it home before the storm kicks off? I'd say the odds are good. Maybe you should stay here and I'll may just make a break for it. <laughs> Care to recalculate those odds? Hurry inside, you two, before you catch cold. Oh, damn. My boy Rolo's out there all alone now, though. Aww. Luca, Nelly will keep trying to reach your gran on the phone. In the meantime, you two hold tight. Sorry, not much to do up here. Most of my stuff is still in the boxes. Mind if I poke around? Be my guest. Well, I am your guest. That's, that's how it works. This looks wild. What is it? Gum. Gum? I'm tracking the structural integrity of gum with increasing amounts of chewing. Chewed that one for 47 days. Jeez, that's... You know what? You gotta commend the effort. <laughs> it's weird, I know. You think it's weird, don't you? A little. But weird can be cool. Yeah, that's the spirit, Luca. Some of the best friends are the weirdest ones. <laughs> oh, wow. Rolo and I have a radio just like this at the treehouse. Probably not exactly like this one. My mom and I tore the whole thing down to the bolts. Fitted it with some state-of-the-art vacuum tubes. She seems pretty awesome. She gets carried away sometimes. I think she feels guilty for working too much. So when she does have time for me, she showers me with high-tech overcompensation. Hmm, interesting way to make up for it. <laughs> I bet you can get all sorts of stations on this. Not out here in the boonies. You wouldn't believe the stuff I could pick up back in the city. Now I gotta double check on the, the game volume here. Make sure it's a... Yeah, okay, it looks, seems to be good. <laughs> Sorry. But around here, it's all farm reports and static. Ah, shucks. Indeed, Luca, indeed. That's how it goes around a, a farming town, you know. As was a cow farm. <laughs> They're gonna be cows outside. <laughs> Judging by the odor, they were well past their prime. Pungent. He flipped open the attached card. Happy trails from Coach Walker and all the Fairview Condors. Boy, you weren't kidding about poking around, huh? Oh, sorry. Was this from your old school? The most recent one, yeah. Some schools gave me going away cards. Some did flowers. When they're really trying to feel good about themselves, they do both. So you've moved a lot. Yeah, that's the thing with having a brilliant parent. There's always a better job somewhere else. That's gonna be rough too. Boom! <coughs> These flowers would last longer if you put them in some water. That's sort of the thing I would do if I cared. Well, you cared enough to keep them is all. 
Luca, can I ask you something? Of course. Oh, the superhero landing. Dang, didn't that hurt? I'll be honest. That hurt more than I expected. <laughs> well, at least you looked cool doing it. Do you ever feel alone? Oh yeah, all the time. <laughs> like, even when people are around? Well, Rolo can be pretty absent-minded sometimes. I'm serious. Does it ever feel like your family doesn't care what you want? Uh, it didn't used to feel that way. I know Gran loves me, but... Sometimes when she looks at me, it's like she's looking at... Oh, <laughs> thank you. For the posture and the hydrate. Uh, hope your evening's going well, VV. <laughs> oh, man. I tell you, I, the more I do these voices, the more I miss water. <laughs> Happy holidays, you bastard. <laughs> oh, thank you. Happy holidays to you, too. <laughs> Uh, hope hope you're ready for them holiday shenanigans. Hope you got your uh, Christmas shopping done and whatnot. You know, that's definitely the thing to do around this time. Not that I would know. I don't get presents for people. <laughs> <clears throat> a problem? Took a deep breath, exhaling slowly. I know the feeling. How do you deal with that? haven't started uh oh <laughs> i mean it you got like about one week only got gifts for my daughter no one else yet i mean that's the important one i would say you know <laughs> you got your priorities sorted so all good <laughs> guess i haven't yet but one thing my dad told me when i was little don't hold a grudge especially against yourself if you try to hold it all in, you're going to pop. So then, what do you do when you don't know what to do? Dad never got to that part. Something I've figured out on my own, though. You got to do something. Anything. Here. Oh, we're busting out. What are you doing? I don't know. Something. We're going to register our complaints with the storm. Oh, <laughs> I thought we were going to be running away here. <laughs> Listen here, you miserable universe. Stop jerking me around. I just want things to go back to the way they were. Everyone tells me it's going to be all right. That things are going to change. Every time something changes, everything gets worse. Screw this town damn whoa let me try oh i'm not gonna be able to scream with this moving sucks i hate it i hate that i hate it why can't i just deal with it and be happy for my mom why can't we just stay somewhere <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> I just want to be a normal kid. Beck brushed off her shirt and straightened up. There. Wow, I actually feel a little better. As abruptly as it began, the storm abated. Thanks. I needed that. I'm honestly surprised he didn't say fuck this town. <laughs> Me too. I should head out before the rain starts up again. Sure, I'll walk you out. Then again, this game's rated T, so no F-bombs here. <laughs> See you in Rolo at the festival? Sounds good. Luca, don't let the universe jerk you around. Gave Luca a light thump on the arm before heading in. <laughs> chapter 5. Chapter 5? We were on chapter 7 and now we're back... Chapter way, yeah. <laughs> Goes in circles and circles and circles. 
the smell of wet things. Despite his dreary surroundings, Luca felt at peace. He'd never shared those details about his dad with anyone, not even Rolo. But it's not like this changed anything. Rolo was still his best friend. Yeah. Adding Beck to the group would help balance things out. Everything's better in threes. Now, judging by the name of the chapter being Friendly Feud, I don't know about that one, Chief. As he headed to oh. The <laughs> I mean, yeah. Sometimes you just... You'll say things with someone new than you ever could with, like, your best friend. It, it's just something that happens. It, it's just like a... You know, you get, like, a different sense of comfort that... Or not even a dense, different sense of comfort. It's just stuff that maybe you might feel comfortable talking with someone who knows you less than your best friend, you know? Hey, Don. Tracking down a lead? You bet. I heard a juicy new rumor. Turns out, when Sharper Valentine died, he left behind a peculiar last wish and testament. Peculiar how? He didn't just give his kids an inheritance. There were conditions. Like what? The document stipulated that Eris had to take on a child as her ward. A kid our age who just showed up to town one night with a lawyer. Solomon. Bingo. So Eris was forced to take care of him. Yep, or she would have lost everything. Why would Sharper care so much about some random kid? Rumor has it old Sharper sowed some wild oats. That explains the way Eris treats him. Poor Solomon. How did you find all this out? A good reporter never reveals her source, Luca. She has a point. You gotta keep the identity of your sources a secret. The bees still aren't back. I better not dilly-dally. Gotta get to the treehouse. To Rolo we go-go. Never in that phone booth ever again. Ever, ever, ever again. Oh. Jeff's hardware closed down about a year ago. The effects of the foul harvest stretched wide. When there are no crops in the field, tractors don't need fixing. Damn. Poor Jeff. He's kooky, but he's cool. At least he gives the kids all the stuff, you know. He met his old friend's eyes and was greeted with nothing but ice-cold anger. Heavens, this is no time for fractured friendships. Uh-oh. Oh, wise crocodile of the book reading, you have predicted our future yet again, I think. Um, wait. Wasn't... No, I think I go. No, I don't. Wait, maybe. Gotta make sure. Gotta check all corners, you know? <laughs> Just in case. You never know. You might find. Going off the beaten path. Okay, that's gonna give us the same presentation, I think. Oh, touch. <laughs> Hey, an achievement. <laughs> We're rebels up in here now. Oh, God. Excuse me, what are you doing? Just locking up for the night, sir. Oh, wonderful. I can only assume this means all festival preparations have been completed ahead of schedule. Um, not exactly, sir. The storm set us back a bit, and it's getting late, so we all decided to... You all... decided? Yes, sir. I was unaware that your job involved deciding things. We are all here at Perennial Harvest because we believe in creating a better future, yes? Yes, sir. Very much, sir. Do you want to be the one to tell this town that we failed them? No. That we gave up because there was a little rainstorm and we all got sleepy? Of course not, sir. Good, then it's decided. Yes, sir, we'll work till the task is done. See that you do. Our harvest awaits. Yikes. I really don't like those clipboards, but that hyena I don't like even more. <laughs> Alright, let's see if we got any new bait, since we learned some new words here. 
Pungent. Luca wrapped a twig of thyme around the hook. Some fish have refined taste. Gotta give her some slack, then reel her in. Pocket watch. Property of Sharper Valentine. Figures. If he had his way, Property of Sharper Valentine would be written on everything in this town. Should we give it back to him? He may not even want it back. The man's got a contentious relationship with time. He'll, we'll keep it here in case he ever wants to pick it up. Well, I think there's only room for two more things here. I'll definitely be checking back every time I learn like a new word. Every time that I can, anyway. <laughs> I want to miss out. Rolo, are you still up there? I'm sorry, Rolo isn't accepting visitors at the moment. Come back never. Luca had only ever heard him speak in this stiff yet gentle tone a few times. And it always meant one thing. You're upset. Oh! What makes you say that? Maybe because my best friend abandoned me for no reason? I didn't abandon you. I'm just a little late. The rain held me up. Liar! <laughs> you liar! <laughs> you weren't even home! What? The storm got bad and I got worried, so I went looking for you. Imagine my surprise when I made it to your house and you weren't there. I hadn't made it back yet. I'm not a fool, Luca. It doesn't take all day to deliver some jam. No, I... The storm rolled out in out of nowhere, and I got stuck after dinner at Beck's house. on his words, knowing he'd said too much. Beck? Dinner? What the heck is a Beck? <laughs> She's a new kid in town. She's actually kind of cool. You'd like her. She needed help convincing her parents that she'd made new friends. New friends? I spent all day waiting for you, and you were off making new friends? It's not like that, Rolo. You know, while I was waiting, I made some upgrades to mission control. It was gonna be a surprise, but you took so long, the storm knocked it all down. Oh, that's all the stuff that we saw earlier. Man. Just like your knockdown, our friendship. What does that even mean? became instinctively angry in response. Both boys were now shouting across the distance. You are my brother, Anakin. <laughs> it means you're a bad friend. I don't care about you don't you don't care about me. <laughs> of course I care, you ass. I knew I'd get in trouble waiting so late for you, but I kept my word, cause that's what friends do. Oh wow, what a noble sacrifice you made. Easy for you to say. Your grand doesn't even care. You can stay out as long as you want, and you wouldn't even get in trouble. Seriously? You're acting like a I chose this. If that's what you think, then maybe you're the bad friend. Calm, well, from my point of view, you're the bad friend. <laughs> maybe Pa is right. Storms bring more than water. This one brought out the real Luca. Stop quoting your Pa's nonsense like it means anything. Yeah, well, at least my Pa is still around. Oh, Rolo, my guy. You don't say that. Dropped, knowing he'd crossed a line. Yeah. But it was too late. Ah. Luca, I good night, Rolo. Dang it. Eesh. Dug through his old stuff, not even sure what he was looking for. Man, anyone ever get into like a really bad fight with a friend before? Rolo. 
What a jerk. Call me a bad friend. Oh, I'm Rolo. Look at me and my amazing family. Oh, oh, oh let, let's let's see. How well can we keep it going? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go for the World Cup. It's the World Cup season. Oh crap. Ah, you know what? I wonder if Rolo thinks I'm still going to the festival with him. He can shove it. I guess I'm just never supposed to make new friends. Aw. Man. Luca? Graham cooed gently from the hallway. You slept straight through breakfast. Luca, are you alright? I'm fine. Oh. I'm fine. Just don't feel like getting up yet. Okay, I'll leave this oatmeal by the door. Gotta run out and take care of some things. Okay. I'll be back later to check in. Sure. Luca just <laughs> wanted to be alone. He waited to hear the sound of the front door closing. I bet Rolo's still gonna go to the festival. Hmm. He's gonna be miserable. Man, still nothing else we can interact with around here. Hey, at least the soccer ball was good for something. <laughs> Gotta kick out the frustrations. Oh. I I guess... <laughs> just back to bed. Luca? I see you didn't eat your oatmeal. Wasn't hungry. Well, just in case you get hungry, I'll leave a sandwich here, too. Thanks. Rolo came by. What did he say? He wanted to talk to you. What did you say? I told him you weren't feeling well. Good. So your plan is just to sit in your room all day? Pretty much. Well, I need to pop away again for a minute. If you decide to end your pity party and go outside... I think it do you some good. Noted. <laughs> Duly noted. And ignored. Luca still couldn't bring himself to go out. Besides, if he ran into Rolo, he'd have to actually confront the situation. Hmm. Yeah, it's always the uh, the high anxiety part right there. There's never anything interesting at the festival anyway. Oh. How do we... It's close. Damn it. There we go. <laughs> the Adventures of Hank Atomic. The complete first volume. Luca carefully opened the cover and began to read. Rolo had received it for his birthday. A special hardcover edition with behind the scenes commentary and bonus art. Rolo cherished it, but asked that Luca keep it at his house. Luca wasn't sure if it was because Rolo didn't trust himself with it, didn't trust his sister around it, or just wanted an excuse to come hang out at Luca's more often. Oh, <laughs> I believe that last one. Whatever the reason, Luca did. Well, whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there standing and hating the who. <laughs> but it had stayed right there where Rolo had stashed it ever since. Now, at the foot of his bed, Luca lost himself in the pages. He'd read it all before, but at this moment, it somehow felt sentimental. He was well into issue number five when he heard soft footsteps from the hallway. Luca? Another little friend came to see you. A girl named Beck Modewill. She said you met yesterday? What did she say? Is she here? She was just dropping by. I told her you weren't taking visitors today. Oh. She seems nice. Yeah. You had a fight with Rolo, didn't you? Can I come in? Maybe later. Alright then. I'll leave dinner on the kitchen table. In case you want a bite before bedtime. Without realizing it, Luca had pouted away the entire afternoon. 
Yeah, and slept through breakfast and have lunch. This game is getting a little too real. <laughs> his beery eyes mm. Luca stood in a vast black expanse. Ooh, this music. He looked up at his father standing beside him. Walt was working a straw at the bottom of a fountain glass, trying to collect the last <laughs> bits of milkshake. Dad, where are we? Taking a final loud gurgling sip, his father peered up from the glass. Oh, that's going to be another, like, horrendous description of a nightmare, isn't it? He jangled the straw playfully with a warm smile, then lifted the empty glass as if to point into the darkness. The source? Luca's eyes followed his father. Ominous. In an instant. He was sitting in front of a blazing campfire. Okay. Across from him sat a large figure in a yellow hazmat suit. Oh. His voice was a scratchy echo. Well, if it isn't the man of the hour, make yourself comfortable. All right, everyone get comfy, y'all. Although you were supposed to do that before, so not my fault if you're not. <laughs> it doesn't work that way here. Their yellow gloved hand pointed to the base of the flame. It's a cold flame. See? See? It appeared at the base of the fire. It wasn't wood that was burning. It was Beacon Pines itself. Oh. Tiny buildings freezing and crumbling as they were consumed by flame. Jesus. Small shadows moving in the burning city. Oh God. Luca leapt to his feet. We've got to help them. The figure gave a dismissive wave of their hand. Why waste energy helping people who can't even help themselves? The figure bent down to examine the panicked crowd as they desperately tried to stop the flames. They only care about what's right in front of them, not like us. Luca's voice was a trembling whisper. Us? The oh. figure slowly stood up, grabbing its helmet with both hands. With a jolt and a twist, the suit emitted a gas. A cloud of torpid mist escaped, slowly revealing the face within. Luca's own face looked back at him. Older, worn, distant. Jesus. The sensation was <laughs> oddly familiar, as if he'd caught his own reflection by surprise in the mirror. The doppelganger smiled. I tried to help once. He gestured towards his face. And all it got me was this. Lucas staggered back. You aren't me. Luca felt a hand catch his shoulder. The gap in the door is a separate reality. I know that the only me is me. Are you sure that the only you is you? His father was there again, beside him. <laughs> Every choice sets us on a path. This is the end of one of your paths, son. Oh. Luca watched his older self shake its head ruefully, its face twisting into a cruel grin. Well, Dad, if you wanted him to see this, far be it from me to disappoint. Luca watched in shock as the figure took a confident step forward and plunged into the flames. In a flash of cold light, he was gone. What does all of this mean? Luca felt a reassuring squeeze on his shoulder. Just remember, why we choose matters just as much as what we choose. Luca woke up to see a hazy figure at the foot of his bed, silhouetted in the morning sun. A ghost! Oh, <laughs> mom? <laughs> no, dear. It's only Gran. Luca rubbed his eyes. Kind, concerned face of his grand came into focus. How are you feeling? Fine. Anything you want to talk about? I don't really feel like talking. That's just as well. How about you sit here and listen a bit? Whatever you and Rollo fought about doesn't matter. But he. Grand silenced Luca with a gentle pat on the leg. Fights between friends happen. What was said doesn't matter. The important thing is that it's not the last thing you ever say to each other. But he said stuff about dad. Well, do you think he meant it? No. He was just mad. Mm-hmm. And did you mean any of the things you said to him? No. Good. One must appreciate friends in their best moments. And accept them in their worst. Except. <laughs> now get your little butt out of bed. The festival's today. You don't want to miss that, do you? I guess not. Seems like a good opportunity to make amends with Rolo, doesn't it? Luca gave a reluctant nod. 
So buy him a corn dog and apologize. But he's the one that. What did I just say? Buy him a corn dog. That's a good boy. <laughs> Everything's better with corn dogs. I need to get going now. Got some last minute festival business to take care of. I'll come find you at the fountain a little after lunch. Alright. I love you, Luca. I love you too. What do they eat? Luca took a <laughs> Corn dogs assume sausages. Sausages assume pork. Pork assumes that pigs are not people here, but we already saw a pig here that is a person. Is this like a, a Bojack situation? <laughs> you have the sentient animals and the farm <laughs> animals. Okay. Chapter 6 Through Thick and Thin Despite Luca's bitterness, Gran was right. He needed to hash things out with Rolo. A big fight changes the nature of a friendship. Whether, in the end, it is for the better or for the worse, all comes down to understanding. If one is not careful, the same familiarity that builds the strongest of bonds can become the wrecking ball that shatters them. Luca emerged from seclusion, taking in the crisp festival air, but the events of the day weren't on his mind. He had to find Rolo. Well, first, let's, I guess, check on, uh, on Dad here. Just to make sure, you know, in case Rolo came by to say some words. After the words he shared. And... There you are. Luca. Rolo wanted me to tell you something. What is it? Roxy rolled her eyes, shaking her head. SMH. Ha. Huh. A space adventure, though you needn't buy it. If ye be brave, go somewhere quiet. Uh, Roxy, I don't... It's a riddle, Luca. My goofy little brother wants you to find him. Luca looked down and kicked at the dirt. Look, I know you two had a fight. The only thing more annoying than my little brother is my little brother without his best friend. So I'm doing him this one favor. Now I need one favor from you. Whatever it is that went down between you two, squash it. If ye be brave, go somewhere quiet. Well, let's see what he has. Unique New York. Unique New York. Huh? Oh, don't mind me. Just warming up for my big ceremony speech. To his mouth. <laughs> Gotta limber up the old gab box. You nervous? Oh, heavens no. Well, break a leg. Give me the gift. Oh, okay. <laughs> How goes the beetle hunt? Pretty rotten. I haven't seen so much as an exuvier. And it's not just the beetles. This morning I couldn't find any critters at all. It's like everything that buzzes or skitters just packed up and left. I'm sure they're out there somewhere. Maybe all the commotion of the festival just spooked them. Yeah, maybe that's it. Welcome to our festival. Don't forget to come back later for Mr. Kerr's speech. And the Perennial Harvest Festival sign reveal. You don't want to miss it. Oh, somebody changed it. I remember that. I wonder if they even checked the sign. I don't know who Perennial Harvest thinks they're impressing with this ridiculous festival. Totally. This town's still falling apart. The weather's still cruddy. And this season's harvest looks like it's going to be worse than last year's. You said it. No amount of corporate pandering is going to change any of that. Exactly. But... The lemonade at the drink stand over there does look pretty tasty. Fits. I'm still going to be mad at them. I'd just rather be mad while sipping some delicious lemonade is all. Can't be... Can't be, uh... Mad on a... Empty... Stomach? <laughs> can't be mad if you're still thirsty. 
Can't gotta be drinking something while being mad at least. Yeah, there we go. Did you hear? After Mr. Kerr gives his big speech, they're gonna have the first annual biggest catch competition. As long as a boot qualifies as a catch, I'm a shoe in. Good luck. Oh wait. Does this will this do anything? Hold on. I know it just lets us zoom in, but like, do we get to overhear something? Nope. This guy who still refuses to move, but as I said before, see, ain't moving. <laughs> nope, I'm not getting out of this chair. <laughs> Every single time. Yep. Wait for it. Unexplained sound once again noted. Like clockwork. What a bunch of drones. <laughs> ah, good old Jeff. Hey Jeff, everything alright? Uh, yeah, yeah, everything's fine. I mean, used to be fine. Just ain't right these days, you know. I really do, actually. You do, don't you? For a moment, the two now shared that same <laughs> wistful gaze. A most welcoming of welcomes. Would you like to share your thoughts? We always strive to improve. Nope. <laughs> this is the first time I've seen this many smiling faces since the foul harvest. I had my doubt about perennial harvest, but I must admit they do put on a nice party. Oh, wise crocodile. No, no words of wisdom. Hmm. No foreshadowing. Okay. Piper, you're actually taking a break from studying. I wanted to see what all the festival fuss is about. But I can't help but notice, you still brought your backpack full of books. Luca, backpacks can carry a lot more than just books. True, true. So what you got in there? Books. <laughs> I was able to return the perennial harvest safety suit you borrowed. I don't think anyone noticed. Good. Now will you tell me what you needed it for? It was a favor for an enemy of my enemy. This isn't going to harm Mr. Kerr, is it? All you need to know is that it's for the good of the family. Family. <laughs> now what's down here, then? Hey, Luca. So you're done at the library? Huh? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. I see. <laughs> Luca, did you know that Beacon Pines is actually unincorporated? A lot of people don't know that. Well, yeah, I didn't know. What's that mean? It means most public works are handled internally. We do all the pipelines. The water treatment. Building regulations. Uh, that's great. Mm -hmm. Census taking. Emergency service. <laughs> Farming? Bank! <laughs> I wasn't even trying. I was just messing with it. But hey! Alright, we got a new word. Um... Is this thing still open? Celebration of excellence. Yep, the same one. <laughs> Can't believe. Oh man, that's good. That is definitely good right there. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. Hiya, Luca. How's Griffin doing? 
What? Oh, nothing. Just pretend I didn't say anything. Huh? Alright, we got a, another mystery on our hand, gang. I mean... Well, I can't talk to Griffin again. Uh... No, wait. This way, over here, first. The old bat... I got a question for you. What do you think this whole festival is for? The way I figure it, Perennial Harvest is trying to win over the town. Like a bribe, but with balloons. Cynical. I like where your head's at. That's what I assumed at first, too, until I eavesdropped on a couple of gossipy clipboards. What if I told you that this whole thing is really a special shindig for a super secret guest of honor? A special guest? Who? I haven't dug that deep yet, but whoever it is, PH thinks they're a big deal. Maybe it's the owner, come back from the dead. The, the, what's his face? Yeah. I don't really remember. The library. Somewhere quiet. I'm sure we need to go to the library, which means we need to explore our other options first. Don't want to miss out on another smack or something. Oh. Also, I guess it would be good to check on the treehouse still. Oh, wait, I think we passed the treehouse area a while back. Mushroom. This is cleaned up. Property of Valentine Fertilizer Company. Looks old. Oh, that's right. In this timeline, we have never come around this part of it. Hmm. <clears throat> Hard to keep track of all these timelines sometimes. Now, excuse me while I take a really long stroll because I forgot that a... Hey, uh... Whoops. Yep. I forgot that uh, I never even checked the... Or no, that the treehouse was actually back over here. <laughs> so, um, the library, I'm sure, is where we need to go. Always take a detour. Soccer ball. Chillin'. Radio. Hey, there we go. Turn the radio into an interstellar communicator, as he'd hoped. It did at least boost the signal enough to overhear truckers one town over. <laughs> Maybe that's where all these kids learned their curse words. I feel like we're moving faster now. Ooh. I mean, it's not that much faster, but <laughs> could be could be a placebo. Hi, Jace. Still working through the newest Hank Atomic? You know it. Some fascinating canon toward the end. Did you know Hank Atomic's shrink array doesn't technically shrink stuff? It uses inverse quantum particle decay. To literally grow the entire universe around an object, leaving that object unaltered. So it just looks shrunk compared to everything else. Bingo. That's wild. But Jace, no spoilers, please. Oh, right, sorry. <laughs> hey, Luca. I've been expecting you. Bravo on deciphering the first riddle. Oh. The first. Oh, you didn't think that was all, did you? Rollo does go all out, doesn't he? Ahem. On planet Farple, you may take issue. 
When the fifth king dies, you'll need a tissue. Get it? Want me to tell you? No, it's okay. Let me figure it out. All right. When you find it, bring it here to be verified. And if you decide you want a hint, the offer still stands. On uh, planet Farple, you may take issue. When the fifth king dies, you'll need a tissue. I can tell you one thing, it's not out there. What you need to find is inside the library somewhere. Thank God the game actually tells me before. Luca grabbed the five pillars of success from the shelf. Once you got a book, you can either bring it here to me or just grab a different one. Luca grabbed the issue with self-help, a helpful guide from the shelf. On Planet of Farple, you may take issue. When the fifth king dies, you'll need a tissue. Luca grabbed 500 meals for one big pot from the shelf. Nah, it's gotta be the Hank Atomic stuff here. Luca grabbed the modern science of atomic radiation from the shelf. Nope. Luca grabbed natural photography, volume 5, from the shelf. Nope, definitely not that. There we go. Ah, you found it. And replaced it with Lucas turning on the lamp. As he slid the book under the purple light, two words glowed. The Adventures of Hank Atomic, issue 5. Luca clicked his tongue with recognition. Rollo cipher pen. He used to write secret messages everywhere with that. And only I had the special flashlight needed to reveal it. But I lost it. Well, apparently he traded Jeff for this purple light bulb. Parted with his entire Halloween candy stash. Oh, jeez. Oh, Rolo. Now let's see here. Get away with such a grift. Only found in... Grub. Cart. Reaching the end of the book, Kato looked up. That's it. Grift in grub cart. Grift in Griffin? Griffin's grub cart. He wants me to go to Griffin's snack stand. Ah, brilliant. I guess you're off then. Good luck on the rest of the scavenger hunt. Thanks, Kato. I think I gave him a bit of an accent there at the end. I don't know if I should keep that. <laughs> All right, to Griffins we go. Woo! Hey, Griffin. Did Rolo come? Luca could finish his sentence. Griffin handed him a corn dog. Oh, that's it. Bought and paid for. Enjoy. I thought there was supposed to be some riddle or something. Yuck. It's cold. Oh yeah, that's been sitting here for a while. Rollo wanted me to be sure to give you that one specifically. Well, that's just... Luca tongued at his cheeks, feeling something rough between his teeth. He reached into his mouth and pulled out a slip of paper. That, I mean, he could have accidentally swallowed that, you know, Rollo. Oh, come on. Bits of corn dog to read the slip. A pickup when you need some pep. Near the fountain, up the step. Ah, <sighs> this is getting to be a whole thing. Alright, I know where to go <laughs> because of talking to these people earlier. There you are, Luca. There's no way I'm actually doing this. It's way below my pay grade. Oh, come on, you big stiff. Let the kids have some fun. Fine. But Rolo owes me one. He waved his hands around sarcastically as he began. What well, takes flight but has no wings? Your final task of friendship brings. See, that wasn't so hard. Hard. <laughs> 
Ah, uh, I feel cheapened somehow. I think it's sweet. What well, takes flight but has no wings, your final task of friendship brings. Good luck, Luca. That's gotta be the treehouse. Oh, wait. Hey. Hey. Did you find the comic book? Yep. And you got the corn dog. Yeah. Well then. I know it doesn't make up for what I said. But here, you've earned this. Careful. Light. <laughs> Thanks. You didn't have to go to all this trouble. I'm sorry I got so mad. Dang it, you were supposed to let me apologize first. Oh, sorry. Now you've apologized twice before me. Just let me do this. Luca, I'm really sorry. With everything that's happened with your mom and all, I've always wanted to be there for you. Be a good friend, you know? When you said you were hanging out with someone else, I kind of freaked out. Rolo. Still my turn. I felt like if you needed some new friend to help you, it meant that I wasn't good enough. But that was selfish and wrong. I was wrong. I'm so sorry, Luca. Okay, apology over. You can talk now. Yay! Oh, that's cute. Rollo, I don't deserve you. I don't deserve you either. That's why we deserve each other. So, what else do you want to do today? We could snoop around and try to find some info about your mom. Snoop where? We could probably sneak into Perennial Harvest HQ while everyone's at the festival. Aren't you curious about all the stuff those clipboards write down? What if we get caught? I think I've had enough excitement for one week. Let's just make the rest of this day about us. Really? Yeah, the rest of the world can wait one more day. I don't know about that. I feel like something bad's about to happen now. You know, I have been wanting to get some work done on the MCDC at Mission Control. The aim is a bit unpredictable. That sounds perfect. <clears throat> and now we got balloons. Oh, I really wish there was like a way to float because we have balloons now. <laughs> Woo! Oh. Okay, let's let's see if we got something new here. Yes, we got two new things. <laughs> we got the smack in the pool. A toy stretchy hand onto the hook. Those things always get dirty anyway. The patience of fishing. Woo! Friendship bracelet? Should we give it to mom? She likes jewelry. That's a sweet thought, Buckaroo. But I'm not sure she'd fully appreciate a pawn bracelet. <laughs> That's the thought that counts, right? Luca tied a small magnet to the line. Fishing with the law of attraction. There we go. <laughs> Try too early there for a second. A key! I think that's all the things we can get from here. Where do you think the lock is for this key? Now why would we want to find that? Because then we would know the secret. Ah, that's no fun. The second we know what it unlocks, it just becomes a boring old key. Right now, this key could unlock anything. Cool. Looks like we use some new bait. You say we head out and find some more. I feel like we've collected all we can, but I mean, hey, there's some more words to learn. I forgot what this sign says. Oh, mission control authorized personnel only, right. Oh, I almost forgot. I ran into your grand this morning. She asked me to give you this. I'll wait for you inside if you want to read it now. 
A letter? Luca, some things are going to happen that might be difficult for you to understand. If I am honest, I hardly understand them myself. But whatever happens, I need you to know that I love you. None of this is fair to you. You have already lost so much. We both have. I wish there was a simpler way forward. But if there is, I haven't thought of it. God knows I've tried everything I've done. I did for you. I hope someday you can accept that. Love, Gran. Uh-oh. Gran? I love you too, Gran. The paper into his pocket and headed up the ladder. Gran, what are you doing? What's up with the letter? Anything you want to talk about? Maybe later. Sure, whenever you want. There's going to be a big boom or something. You know, you really didn't have to go to all that trouble just to apologize. I know, but we've been looking forward to the festival for weeks. After I ruined everything with my big mouth, this was the best way to make sure you still had a good time without me. Rollo. The festival seemed nice. Was it nice? We can still go. Nah, this is fine. There's always next year. Yep. <laughs> Yep. Huh? What was that? Aw oh, man, we missed the fireworks. fireworks. It was something the boys couldn't possibly comprehend. Oh god. And cruel as time itself. It was those bombs. Wait. A nuclear winter? Oh my god. They could react. It encased them in ice. Two boys. Reunited by friendship. Only to be cruelly separated by a malevolence beyond reason. And so, our story ends on this melancholy scene. In a silent treehouse turned statuary. In a town brought low by its secrets. Sits a pair of friends. Alone. Together. For the rest of time. Oh my god. The end. Oh my god, this game. That can't be the ending. It simply can't. I won't accept it. And I hope you won't either. There are more endings. More possibilities. I, I can feel it. We are just going to have to sort through them all until we find the one that fits. Jesus. <laughs> oh man. Radio then. Oh, we got hard here. Shit. We got flight. Okay, let's see. Which one do we want to try first? Maybe. I feel like interrogation is the way to go for like the real way. So back to this. Light. Luca drew himself up and decided to take the only option they had left. Flight. He squinted down the barrel of the mission control defense cannon, aiming it through an opening in the dense tree branches. He looked up with surprise as it struck true and taut. Wow, I can't believe that worked. Hey, Mr. Kerr. We'd love to hear your thoughts, but I'm afraid we have places to be. Come on, Iggy. See ya, jerks. Ah, <laughs> oh, fine. We know where that leads them. This way, we'll take the tunnels. Luca and Iggy winced as they sprinted through the thicket. The branches clawed at them, reluctant to give passage. After what felt like a marathon, Luca stopped in his tracks as they reached the clearing. What the? That was all he was able to say before Iggy slammed into his back. The boys tumbled down a steep decline and crashed with a wheezing thud on a surface as hard as ice. In oh, fact, man. It was ice. This is five. the cause of the, the winter. Stood silently, 
right? Well, I guess it's good that we went with this. Now we get a direct explanation for what happened. The sky was like sapphire. With each breath, a plume of steam escaped from Lucas' lungs. Actually, there was also foreshadowing because there was like a part of this forest that was covered in snow or something too. Let's keep moving. Luca pulled Iggy to his feet as they gazed across the snowy terrain. Ah, uh, finally, we've reached the Christmas part of this game. That was actually pretty badass. Uh-huh. I think we lost them. Are we up in the mountains? I don't think so. If anything, we went downhill. Then what's up with the Winter Wonderland? All I know is there's no going back the way we came. Let's see if we can get our bearings. Follow me. Luca, Luca, are you there? Almost forgotten the walkie-talkie he was carrying. Is that Bozo Kerr? I hope nothing bad has happened to you out in those woods. No need to be rude. It seems like the only dangerous thing in the woods is you. He speaks, the young man of the hour. Now, how in tarnation did you end up with one of our radios? Just lucky, I guess. Boy, howdy, you Van Horns are full of surprises, aren't you? You knew my parents. Never had the honor of meeting your father, but your mom sure was a handful. We gotta keep moving. Uh, nothing to move around here. Wait. Yep, nothing to move around here. What's that readout? Sitting above, just above 258 Kelvin. That's down a bit from last time. Should we report this to Mr. Kerr? Eh, still within safe ranges. It may be spreading, but it's under control for now. Even a small nudge in the equilibrium could cause a cascade. Dude, relax. Just a few more sights to hit before we can punch out. Let's get this over with. How did the, the whole town seems to have frozen over already? And all we did was like go down a slide or rope, that is. <laughs> it's all this. Hard to say with all this snow. I think it's a town sign. I can almost make out the letters under there. What town could this even be? There couldn't be another town in this deep into Weepwood. I'm looking at evidence to the contrary. Let's figure out what we're dealing with here. Step one, snow's gotta go. Let's see what I can do. In situations such as these, I find it's best to chuck stuff first and ask questions later. Well, there's nothing here to throw. Do I throw you? Do I throw myself? Did I miss? Oh. Hiya! Yep. Looks like whatever was supposed to go off during the festival went off way ahead of time this time. This doesn't make any sense. We're in Beacon Pines? How's that possible? We ran away from town. How did we get back here? I guess we got turned around. Where did all this snow come from? Well, it's been colder than normal lately. There's a pretty big difference between sweater weather and this arctic hellscape. The puddle we fought at before, it was cold too. Maybe all of it leads to one source. You think it's related? What the hell's going on? You're gonna we're gonna get you some answers. Let's keep moving. The fencing listened. Each chain link encapsulated with a translucent layer of ice. This looks like the stuffy they put up around the weepwood. The stuff who put what? Wait, the stuff who put up? I, I don't know. <laughs> My reading. It bad. <laughs> it's all frozen. 
probably see a school of minnows encased in the ice. Whatever happened here, it happened fast. The fish didn't even have time to run. Or, you know, swim run. Where is Mr. Man in the chair? The crunching of footsteps trailing Luca went hush. He looked back to see Iggy's face twisted with confusion. Everyone's gone. What? There's nothing here but more snow. There must be an explanation for all this. We have to keep looking. You can look all you want. I quit. Iggy, we have to keep going. You don't get it, do you? This isn't one of your pathetic Hank Atomic stories. We aren't going to save the day. We aren't even going to save ourselves. My face is mangled. This town is destroyed. And everyone we've ever known is gone. We don't know that. You can't just quit. Do whatever you want. Wow, Iggy. I'm done. Iggy, it's going to be okay. Huh. Iggy began to cry. Seeing Iggy in such a pathetic state gave Luca a sense of compassion and more than a little guilt. It is getting pretty late, I think. Probably not a great idea to stumble around in the dark anyway. Luca allowed himself to collapse next to Iggy. Let's just rest for a bit. The boys huddled together for warmth and comfort. If not for exhaustion, their minds would be racing, trying to make sense of the events of the day. As it was, all they had energy for was to sit in silence, numb. The way the snow covered everything over. It's kind of calming. Yeah. Uh, I haven't had time to say it, but thanks. Huh? For getting us away from those creeps. I sort of rose up back there. Iggy, I should be the one apologizing. This all happened because I lost my temper. Nah, that's bull hockey. First of all, you didn't know what that gunk would do. You didn't, right? Of course not. And second, stop with this baloney about losing your temper. But I did lose my temper. To his half face. Obviously. But that's not exactly what you should have done. Huh? I was being a horse's ass. You were supposed to be a horse's ass in response. That's how it works. Again, I'm having a hard time following. You wanted me to fight you? Of course! Jeez, you goody-goody types take forever to understand this very basic point. Why would I go around saying cruel things trying to get into fights? It's something to do. You're an asshole because you're bored? Sometimes I just feel empty. You wouldn't understand. You wouldn't get it. <laughs> you and Roller are always having a blast together. Laughing and calling that dinky little treehouse mission control. Perfect little Luca Van Horn. With his perfect little life. My life is not perfect. Everyone in town likes you. Not everybody. Well, that new girl hasn't even unpacked yet, and she even already likes you. You have Tish. I love Tish. Tish is great. But she ain't exactly the world's greatest conversationalist, you know? I get that impression. Ah, <clears throat> uh, must be raining out here. Definitely. It's a bad day for rain. We should probably try to get some sleep. Yeah. Let's lay low for now. Tomorrow we'll get to the bottom of all this. Luca? Yeah? I always did want to see the inside of your dinky little treehouse. What do you think? Not bad. I'll give you the full tour when we get back. You know what? Hmm. When it comes to the worst days of my entire life, this one wasn't half bad. The house smelled of warm bread. Oh no, that's the sound of a nightmare. Was playing with toy blocks on the 
in a rug. He looked up to see his parents on the couch. His mother held his father's head in her lap. She idly stroked his hair while humming a song. A voice behind Luca spoke. This is how you remember them, huh? Luca turned to see his own face. The doppelganger from his dreams, still clad in a yellow hazmat suit, still carrying a look of disdain behind empty eyes. Could be a sign of the future. Oh, look at this perfectly cozy scene. You know it wasn't really like this. The figure picked up a toy block and inspected it. It's amazing yeah. the facades that one can build given the right materials. Not that I blame us. These are a child's memories. All warm and fuzzy. You don't remember, do you? Nope. Lucas snatched the block from the figure's yellow gloved hand. Remember what? Oh man, what if everything that's happening right now is actually memories? And he's just trying to think in his mind how he could have bettered things back Ouch. then. That's gotta be what the point of the doppelganger is in the streams, maybe. I don't know. Just spitballing here. <laughs> Everything is true here. It's just a matter of what we choose to see. Well, let me show you. <laughs> oh, hello there, Spice Master. Hope your evening's going well. The world flickered and pulsed. So we try to get to the bottom of this mystery. Luca was sitting next to his bed, listening to his heartbeat with one of his dad's stethoscopes. The doppelganger limped into the room. Oh, no. We both know that's not how this went. He grabbed Luca's hand and guided the stethoscope to the floor. Luca heard muffled shouting, brought close by the stethoscope. It was his parents fighting. Oh, okay. Do you remember what we did next? Luca gave a slow nod and crept down the hall to peek through the banister. I wish we got to see this in like animated form, but the descriptions are actually pretty nice enough. He could see the outline of his mother at the I gotta say. Name's Eleanor. <laughs> right is right, and what's wrong is wrong. And people die when they are killed. I could never live with myself if I let Sharper get away with this. Eleanor raised her voice. Spare me your bullshit platitudes. What about our son? Luca flinched, dropping the stethoscope down the stairs. Walt turned with a panicked smile. Luca, is that you, buddy? With tears in his eyes, Luca descended the stairs. Mom. Dad, what's going on? Walt dropped to a knee to meet Luca eye to eye. Nothing, Buckaroo. Your mom and I just got a little overexcited, is all. That's bullshit, Dad. Luca placed the stethoscope against his father's chest. Don't lie to me. <laughs> it sounded like you were going somewhere. Walt gently removed the device from Luca's ears. Listen to me, Luca. I have some business to take care of. I'll be back in time to tuck you in. Luca hugged his father tightly. Promise? Walt stood up and walked to the door. He glanced over his shoulder. I promise. With a wink and a grin, he put on his hat and strode out into the evening sun. And he never came back. <laughs> a figure approached soundlessly from the foggy snowfall. It stood above them. A mouse? Lingering in contemplation, slowly raising one hand above Iggy. It snapped out two brisk wraps on his head. From a deep slumber, Iggy sprang up defensively. Get your hands off me! Whether it was the calming presence or the recognition that he was not in danger, Iggy felt his clenched fists lower. Just what do you think you're doing? Luca looked up, gradually remembering his whereabouts. The figure exhaled a cloud of warm vapor. You two certainly have caused a lot of commotion. What's that supposed to mean? Take it easy, Iggy. We were asleep minding our own business. You're the one running around knocking on people's heads. I'm sorry if I hurt you, Iggy. 
You didn't hurt nobody. Anybody. Huh? Oh, I see. You think you're better than me, you... <laughs> you big hatted scarfy necked furball. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's lower the temperature a bit here. Interesting choice of words. I mean, let's all just calm down. Who are you? A friend. An observer. A hitchhiker on the infinite expanse of possibility. Great, how about a name? If you must call me something, you can call me Nat. How about you make like a gnat and buzz off? Very well. Wait! Do you live here? You might say that. So you know where we are. You might also say that. Look, pal, we just want to find a safe way out of here. You gonna help us or not? Before knowing how to leave, one must know where they are. Oh, jeez. All right, that does it. Luca, I don't know about you, but I'm getting out of here one way or another. Hmm. <laughs> Enough with the riddles. Iggy, wait up. Very well, I suppose this isn't the time for metaphors. I'll show you how to get back home. Come here. Nat took a deep breath in. Close your eyes. Nat exhaled slowly, then snapped his fingers. Okay, open them. For a brief moment, Luca and Iggy let themselves believe that some great magic was about to unfold until they opened their eyes <laughs> and found themselves in the exact same place. Honestly, I kind of thought something was going to happen there too. Cold and disheartened. This is your home. This is Beacon Pines. Look, Nat, we don't know how we got here. Maybe we stumbled through some time travel gate in Weepwood? Or we teleported to some alternate universe? Or this is all just some cruel experiment by Kerr and his goons. But this is not our home. You're inching closer to the truth. Alas, the reality is much less fanciful. Just give it to us straight. So be it. As I said, this is Beacon Pines. The original, true Beacon Pines. So they rebuilt the town, maybe? You both grew up here. But the town you've called your home for the past several years is a replica. Ah, oh, okay, yep. A remarkable achievement of engineering, to be fair. But a replica nonetheless. That's impossible. It's too much work. You'd need a whole town to replicate a whole town. Indeed, to pull off such a feat would require immense labor power. That which could be moved would be moved. <laughs> so they said, what if we took Beacon Pines and moved it somewhere else? <laughs> that which could not would require a precise duplicate. We would have noticed. Someone would have noticed. You'd think so, unless the auditing was impeccable. A mind-numbing attention to detail. As for the innumerable trivialities which complete the tapestry, well, you can leave that to the miraculous thing we call a brain. It has a real aversion to discontinuity, a revulsion even. The brain has a wonderful way of smoothing out the rough edges, keeping us sane. Luca and Iggy looked around uncomfortably. So you're saying that someone made an entire new town and moved us all and no one noticed? Precisely. But why? Why is the one question that can never be answered with certainty? The best one can do is to uncover... The source. Why do you say the source like that? Why, indeed. Eh, uh, it's all ridiculous. There's no way they could... If this really is home... 
He sprinted off into the pale distance. As Iggy turned to follow, Nat called out. Iggy, it's not too late to turn back. Simply head west through Weepwood. What is this mouse doing here? <laughs> the source. The source. He expressed his sympathy with a shrug and sauntered off as unassumingly as he'd arrived. He'd given Luca and Iggy what they needed and nothing more. As Luca sprinted across the snow, the events of the past few days became clearer, pieces to a larger puzzle. Rollo said he was underground somewhere, captured. Mr. Kerr tried to cover it up with lies. The clipboards were hell-bent on capturing Iggy. It all seemed to point to perennial harvest, but right now, there was one thing that Luca needed to know. His father's grave. Luca stopped dead in his tracks. The tree was gone, uprooted and moved, leaving a raw gash in the earth. He dropped to his knees and dug wildly at the cold snow. His numb hands hit something hard, a headstone. A dry whisper escaped Luca's lips. You're here. All this time, I thought I was visiting you. But you've been here, alone in the snow. Dad, I'm so sorry. They ruined your favorite spot in the world. Our favorite spot in the world. Dad, what do I do? Yeah, that'd be really rough. Why do you give me the slip like that? What if I couldn't find you, you jerk? Oh. Iggy, they... They stole his tree, Iggy. Yikes. Suddenly, they heard the crunch of approaching footsteps in the snow. We gotta hide. Two five nine K. Fall off distance, still good. Dude, did you hear me? I said two five nine. Sorry. You ever think about what we did here? We saved a whole town of people. Doesn't feel like it sometimes. What about everything we left behind? That's the grave of someone with a family. The people who love them will never know the truth. The truth is overrated. Hey! Don't be such a downer, dude. We took this job to change the world. Yeah. Come on. It's almost lunchtime. <laughs> what? <laughs> that walk? <laughs> he just, like, kind of moonwalked there. <laughs> Easy, burn the Christmas tree. <laughs> Weirdo. <laughs> Bro, literally just, like, moonwalked out of there. Here I thought I was a jerk. These dinguses are out here literally dancing on graves. I thought I was visiting him. I thought he was with me. Not gonna lie, that's that's a bad break. Here's some advice. Hey! Who's any of this helping? What? Sitting here in the snow crying like some pushover. Who are you helping? Iggy, look what they did. They lied to everyone. Blah, blah, blah. Luca Van Horn, you're a lot of things, but you ain't no pushover. What did I tell you before? When some jerk comes at you acting like a horse's ass, I should stand up for myself. Hell yeah. Kerr and his merry little band of clipboards pulled off this switcheroo for a reason, right? Nat mentioned something about a source. Whatever's at the source must be awfully valuable to perennial harvest. Sure it would be a shame if something unfortunate were to happen to their precious source, wouldn't it? What do you have in mind? If it's small enough to steal, we snatch it. If it's too big to snatch, we smash it. What if it's too big to smash? <laughs> I'm always up for a challenge. I'm going to make this right, Dad, I promise. Let's do this. Let's locate the source. Huzzah! Adventure ho! 
It can get awful cold out there in those woods, Luca. Probably best you two stay put and conserve your energy. Help's on the way. Where's Rolo? Where's my mom? Did you kill her? Oh, heavens no. Do I seem like a killer to you? Yeah. <laughs> yup. Well, do I? Ah, shucks. Now that hurts my feelings. <laughs> Screw that guy. <laughs> Wait a minute. If this is the original town, then that means... What's that? Long story. So a few years back, I, uh, came into possession of some premium-grade fireworks. Not the wimpy firecracker stuff they give kids, the good stuff. So why did you bury it under a tree? That's the long part of the story. You and Rolo were doing chores at Rolo's chicken coop. The fire coop. And you guys pissed me off for some reason or another. No, you didn't. <laughs> yep. I just wanted to give you guys a little scare. But, like I said, these were some primo fireworks. So I might have underestimated things. You blew up the chicken coop? I prefer to think of it as a incendiary redecoration. Sorry, but you should have seen the looks on your faces. Rello got grounded for months. Which is why I needed to stash the evidence and lay low. So I buried him under that tree, but when I came back for him later, they were gone. I figured some grown-up found him and tossed him. Turns out, it wasn't the fireworks that got moved. It was us. Unbelievable. <laughs> now we know what happened with the flaming chicken coop. Do you think this is a game? Newsflash, boyo. You're not a hero. You're a little brat who is in the way over his head. A hero is just someone who refuses to give up. Comics these days are rotting children's brains. Everyone thinks they're a spaceman superhero. I was always partial to Hank Atomic myself. Is that so? Do you really think you have a chance against us? You have no idea how powerful we are. Prepare to blast off, loser. <laughs> Crooked. Just like this whole stinking place. Crooked. And the word of today, children, is... Crooked. Uh... Any way we can explore around any of this stuff? Maybe check this? Nope. Alright. To the hole we go. Echo, 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 echo. Whoa! I can see why they wanted to move us all out of the town now. But why would they dig a giant hole? I think this is it. The source. This is the source? Okay, so... Hold on, I'm trying to break this down. Because in the previous ending we just had... And with the evidence we found before in one of the other timelines, it seemed like his grandma had explosives, knew to hit the fountain, and in doing so would unleash the, uh, the hell frost, as it were, that basically consumed everybody. So why, why one, did she repeat it if it already happened, and two, like, what good does that do for anybody? <laughs> it's a dang hole. How do we smash a hole? Uh oh. Oh, it's much more than that, my annoying little friend. Kerr. Where's Rolo? I wasn't lying before. He's safe. Well, safer than you two, at least. Drats, it's cold. You just had to drag me all the way out here, didn't you? It really is something, isn't it? What did you do to our town? What is all of this? 
Well, that's a doozy of a question. This is the source where they collect the unrefined, uh... Honestly, boys, I don't understand any of this well enough to explain it. Fact of the matter is, I'm not paid to know. What do you mean you don't know? Ain't you in charge? Oh, heavens no. My role is merely a flash winning smile and manage various complications. Complications like us? You are a smart boy. Oh, he's a hyena. Oh, jeez. It's the eyes that do it. It really is nothing... <laughs> Nothing personal, kid. Some people are destined to strive for greatness, and others are simply obstacles along the way. Seems like you were destined to be a creepy lackey. The point is that we all play a part in life. Mine just happened to be a lead in the role of a lifetime, and you happen to be extras ready for your curtain call. You aren't giving up without a fight. Your smile is going to be so winning after we're done with you. Now boys, there's no need for melodrama. Makes it even a professional such as myself embarrassed for you. Let's change the mood a bit. Scene change. There, that's better. Deal with them. Why are you smirking? Because I have a box full of fireworks and you don't. Stop. Let's not do something regrettable. Joke's on you, regret is one of my specialties. Out of curiosity, what would happen if I threw these in your precious hole? Okay. <laughs> bad wording, bad wording. Nothing, nothing at all. You're a terrible liar. I'll have you know, I am an exceptional liar. Uh, bu -bu -bu. That's far enough. Stop, you fool. Call off your goons. After a long pause, Mr. Kerr flung up his hand with frustration. Very well. You can all head back for the night. It's been a long day. I'll handle these two from here. Mr. Kerr sighed into the frigid air. It's just us now, Iggy. You can put that down. What, like this? Oh, God. Iggy, no. Oh! Whoa! Oh, Jesus. Oh! Oh, no! Jesus. You reckless child, what have you done? Luca, listen to me. Hold on tight and use the walkie-talkie to call them back. Uh, how, um, what channel do I use? It doesn't make a damn difference, they're always listening. If you do that, the clipboards will just haul us up and snag us both. The only way you get out of this is if Kerr's out of the picture. Just let go and save yourself. If he lets go, we both die. I don't want to die, but seeing the look on your face almost makes it worth it. Mr. Kerr, you've had a long life. Why don't you actually do some selfless and just let go? <laughs> long life? I'll have you know I can still play 25. You should have heard me sing the part of Phyllis Young. Rum dum dum, property dum dum. Wow, can you believe this guy? Um. <laughs> Kerr, just let go. No can do. If you want to save your friend, you'll have to save me too. Luca, look at me. It's okay. You aren't going to kill your friend like that, are you? Jesus. I'm not his friend. Yes, you are. Nah, I'm just a no good bully. Like you, Kerr. Iggy, no. And I told you what you need to do with bullies. I can't. 
It's your only way out of this mess. Two birds with one stone. It makes sense for us to fall together. Wackadoos travel in packs. Luca, let me do this. Let me do the right thing for once. Luca had no choice but to... Refuse. Luca had no choice but to refuse Iggy's request. He tightened his grip and reached for the walkie-talkie in his pocket. A wild delight crept onto Mr. Kerr's face. That's a good lad. Now, radio for help. Iggy begged Luca with his eyes one last time. But Luca pressed the button and called out. We... we need help. Mr. Kerr is in danger. It wasn't long before they were once again surrounded by Cliff Lords. Mr. Kerr sighed with relieved frustration. There you are. You really are a worthless lot, aren't you? Mirror, now. <laughs> Clipboard dutifully produced an ornate ivory hand mirror, and Mr. Kerr began preening his tussled hair. Ah, that's better. Mr. Van Horn, I applaud your sharp thinking under duress. I'll put in a good word for you with the founder. Take them away. A swarm of hands overpowered Luke. Yeah, I mean, I felt like this was going to be... bag was pulled over his head was the defeated look on Iggy's face. The end. Yeah, I felt like this was going to be an end, so that's why I picked it. Since we can go back immediately. I think this was one of those times where doing the right thing was the wrong thing. Okay, let's go back to it and accept. All right, Iggy. Godspeed. Luca had no choice but to accept Iggy's request. With a quiet blink, Luca watched a teardrop sail down into the howling void. As his fingers slowly gave up, he met eyes with Iggy. Good. All those fireworks, too. He is making sure he set all of those off before I hit the bottom. Hell of a goodbye, Iggy. Luca, you should really step back. What? Quickly. Curious. Ah, but of course. Those fireworks of Iggy's must have been just the right amount of energy. We should get out of here before Perennial Harvest arrives. Not until you tell me what just happened. Your friend's sacrifice just saved this town. For a little while, anyway. How? Tempest Liquamine is a peculiar substance. It can change the relationship between matter and time itself. But doing so requires unfathomable energy. In a closed system that energy can only come from its surroundings. A useful side product of this property being, by adding precisely the correct amount of energy to it, one can create a cryogenic cascade. So the gunk makes things cold and the fireworks made the whole freeze over. That's one way of putting it, yes. As dumb luck would have it, the fireworks weren't strong enough to generate a runaway reaction. I shudder to think what would have happened in that case. Yeah. Okay, so maybe that's what the grandma was trying to do. She was trying to prevent it from happening, but they didn't have the right amount of energy. It'll take them a good while to safely break through the access to the source again. If you know all this stuff, why have been you've been helping me? I have been, in my way. Each one of us has our role to play. Iggy's role, it turns out, was to buy us precious time. Mine has been to observe and wait. Wait for what? You. Me? Why? What's my role? A fierce twinkle flashed in Nat's eyes. Luke Van Horn. You are going to save the world. With a chuckle, Nat turned and walked west. Dumbfounded, Luca followed behind him, trudging through the snow. 
every step taking him further away from everyone and everything he knew and closer to destiny to be continued in beacon pines pines harder what revenge served cold second times a charm wait that's it this ends with a crummy cliffhanger just when it was getting good Bruh. i'm even starting to like iggy no way i refuse to be associated with some never-ending parade of sequels oh <laughs> back and find something more definitive <laughs> so that's the ending if you want a uh, sequel after sequel after sequel and for some reason a mouse that is like all-knowing okay hold on <laughs> interesting all right good cop hard cop they'd run the classic good cop Hard cop interrogation. Rollo brandished a steely gaze. I've got this. Read about it a hundred times. Rollo swaggered past the chair which propped up the slumping Hiram Tolliver. Without even looking at his captive, he began with a long, blustery drawl. Well, 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 Mr. Tolliver. Mr. Tolliver remained motionless. Rollo spun around to face him. He'd clearly expected to rouse Mr. Tolliver with his booming voice. <laughs> Mr. Tolliver? Beck and Luca gave each other an unsure glance. Rollo slammed his fist on the table. I said, Mr. Tolliver! <laughs> the table lamp and beamed it onto the unconscious face. Mr. Tolliver groaned and slowly lifted his head. He Hadley Ho. With a muddled, weary what in the world? The hair wobbled as he attempted to straighten up. Who? Who's there? Mr. Tolliver could only make out rough shapes through the glaring light. With a gruff tone, Rollo hoped to both conceal his voice and intimidate. Ahem. I'll be asking the questions here, punk. Now hold on, let's just calm down. Oh, I am calm. Calm as a carrot in dirt. As for you, looks like you're sweating. Doubtful expression on Beck and Luca's faces transformed into awe. We can do this my way, or... Well, let's just say I've never needed another way. Hitting his stride, was now channeling every detective drill his memory could recall. He slammed the table again. Oh, our boy is MVP. Now dance! What? I don't even... Tolliver's voice became desperate. He was nearly in tears. You've tied me down. How on earth could I dance? Dance with your mouth, punk. Spill the beans! What are you doing poking around this house? Uh, I'm here to help Juniper. To make sure everything's ready. Oh, so you're in cahoots with Gran. Gran? Gonna help her blow up the festival, eh? Blow up the festival? Good lord! No, no, you've got it all wrong. Where is she now? <laughs> She's headed to the source. Source? What's the source? It's where... The town began. Where it all began. What is Operation Spark Plug? <laughs> Rollo swung around with a repentant grimace. Damn, Rollo. I think you went a little too hard on him. What did he say about the source? It's where the town began? We need more information. Yeah, but we'd never... We'd better not push Mr. Tolliver any further. Is there anyone else who might know more? What about the History Museum? It just got set up for the festival. Nah, that tent was put up by the Valentines. Everything they do is just a bunch of fluff to glorify themselves. Is there anything more reliable? The library. If there's any information about this source thing, Kato can help us find it. Let's go get some answers. Huzzah! We continue our story.
This is a dang nice library. Thanks, we work hard on it. Aren't you a little young to be a librarian? Oh, uh... Kato hung out here so much, eventually they gave him a set of keys. I just keep an eye on the place for Mrs. Novak sometimes. They got you working for free? It's quiet and I get access to all the books I can read. What more could a person want? Fair enough. What can I do for all you? We need a favor. I already told you and Rolo. We can't put you any higher on the wait list for the next tank atomic. And if you're here with more candy, I'll have you know I can't be bought. Call it a personal code of conscience. Actually, we're looking to do some research. Now you're speaking my language. What are you looking for? That's the thing, we sort of don't know. What do you got in the history of the town? Hmm. There's the country record archives. What's in those? Births, deaths, newspaper clippings, stuff like that. Pretty boring reading. But they do go all the way back to when the town was founded. Great, we'll start there. Huzzah! Chapter eight. No. <laughs> no, I think you mean yes. Finally, chapter 8. Wait, did, did I get to chapter 8 before? Hey, page 69. <laughs> the kids spent the rest of the afternoon combing through dusty piles of old county records, desperately searching for anything that could help them make sense of Mr. Tolliver's cryptic utterance. Puka tried to shake the thought of Grand's basement, but his focus wavered. Explosives. Messages hidden in jam. Dossiers on various town figures. And a corkboard threaded with photos. Yeah. Grand was the only family he had left. He still couldn't bring himself to believe the worst. But the old map with the symbol of explosives in town square made that difficult. As the sun began to set, the kids were no closer to the truth. If I have to read any more records, my eyeballs are gonna pop. We have to keep digging. If I dig another word, I'm gonna end up in one of those, these asinine death records. Rollo Cotter lived a full and wonderful life till he read so much boring crud that his brain oozed out of his ears. <laughs> Been there before <laughs> with some research papers. If you've got a better idea, spit it out. You sound like my sister. Keep pushing your luck, pal. And it won't be boring county records that kill you. I'll put you in the obituaries myself. You're a country record. Really? That's the best you've got? When I'm done with you, you'll be a footnote in history. Just like... Jay Hartford here. I'd love to see you try. Hey, hey, hey. We're all a little tired here. Let's just take a minute and... The back of Luca's mind. Wait, what was that name, Beck? In the obit? Jay Hartford? From the Brookville Tribune eight years ago. That can't be right. What is it? Jay Hartford. That's my grand's name, Juniper Hartford. Maybe there were two Jay Hartfords? Mrs. Hartford is survived by her young daughter, E. Hartford. My mom's name is Eleanor. Okay, this is getting creepy. If your grand is six feet under, three towns over, then who am I living with? The question hung in the air. Oh, shit. I think... I think his grandma... Is his mom, and she just aged rapidly because of the chemicals or whatever. All right, gang, I gotta close up for the night. How late is it? Almost ten. Oh crap! Pa is gonna kill me. I gotta go. Yeah, my parents will be worried sick. Okay, let's meet up as early as we can at the festival tomorrow. What are you going to do about the unconscious man in your basement? I'll think of something. Yeah, I mean, if, if Gran got there earlier than us, 
Um... If he was lucky, Gran, or whoever it was, hadn't gotten back yet. And of course, there was Mr. Tolliver tied up and unconscious in the basement. Dealing with him would be the first order of business. Luca shook out his arms to calm his nerves before entering. Oh, there she is. He held perfectly still, tempering his breath, and listened closely. She was asleep. His only hope was that she hadn't found Mr. Tolliver before dozing off. <laughs> Ain't no way she didn't see that this was open already. Ain't no way. Yep, he's gone. Oh no. Tolliver was nowhere to be seen. Maybe he woke up, escaped from his bindings, and left without a trace. Maybe Gran knew everything. What do I do? Luca's hungry stomach groaned, not realizing it, he'd gone the entire day without eating. <laughs> okay, I can figure this out. I just need a little brain food. Luca rushed over to the pile of jam jars, unscrewed one, and shoveled a handful into his mouth. <laughs> I'm afraid your jam delivery will be delayed. Lift the lid to read the label. Mr. Nuncreed. <laughs> okay, now I can think. Wow, really? Just a jam? That's all it took? Okay. <laughs> so if Gran knows we tied up Mr. Tolliver, I'm screwed. If she doesn't know, then I need to play it cool. I guess the only option is to go to bed and act as if nothing is wrong. Gran will think Mr. Tolliver finished what he was sent to do and left when he was done. Well, I mean, he could have spilled the beans and said that, you know, someone was in the basement and tied him up. He won't know it was us. He couldn't have known it was us. Oh, no. Ran? Oh, stick to the plan. Put a bed. Play it cool. Executive step, his legs weakened. His stride began to falter. He tried to grab for the railing to steady himself. Something was wrong. It was the jam. Come on, legs. Just a few more steps. Luca groaned and tried to move. His limbs might as well have been bolted to the ground. Through numb lips, he mumbled just before falling asleep. The germ. Yes, indeed, my boy. It was the germ, indeed. Sweet boy. What did you get yourself into? Rest now and let me handle everything. Chapter 9 a speech to end all speeches. Luca awoke to find himself face down in bed. He moaned into his pillow. Why would Gran drug him? Or rather, why was she trying to drug Mr. Nuncreed? Hmm. Shaking I mean, Nuncreed is sus head, based off of that one other ending, so... Hand. The festival! Where have you been? I, uh... Gran put something in the jam. Yeah, we know. Secret message for secret conspirators. Not this one. This one intended for Mr. Nuncreed. Put me to sleep! Whoa-ho-ho! -ho! Sly devil. Sly. <laughs> I think she's trying to remove him from the equation. He might be in danger. Have you found anything? We looked around, but haven't seen anything odd. Your gran is nowhere to be found. But Mr. Nuncreed is just loafing around waiting for the speech. What speech? Mayor Gus just got up to the podium. Everyone is gathering at the stage. Let's get moving. 
Oh jeez, everyone is here. Augustus Valentine nervously wiped his brow. Ahem. Is this thing... Uh, hello, Beacon Pines. I'm Augustus Valentine, your mayor, and... I suppose you already know that. Uh, oh yes, before we get started, I just wanted to take a moment to recognize someone who couldn't be here today. This town wouldn't be here to be where it is today without my father, Sharper Valentine. So I thought we could begin with a round of applause befitting such a great man. Woo! Even that's more than the old Godger deserved. Gus cleared his throat and awkwardly <laughs> loosened his tie. Right, where was I? bounded on the stage with the energy of a preacher at a big tent revival. Gus Valentine, everyone. He gave Gus a hearty slap on the back and motioned him off the stage. Let's hear it for our mayor. Woo! What a great turnout. Ah, oh, heck, I didn't prepare anything. But I suppose I could say a few words. Would be a shame to waste such a beautiful podium. Mr. Kerr pulled a big stack of note cards out from his vest. Yeah, he was waiting for this moment, that's for sure. Oh, God. Community, conviction, commitment. These are the things we celebrate at Perennial Harvest. For us, these are the pillars of the bridge to a better tomorrow. But I think it's time to add a new pillar. Change. Change is a powerful thing. It's inexorable, unavoidable, and undeniable. And I am dadgum thankful for it. Change is the reason we're all together today. It's hard for me to believe that it was only four years ago when fate brought me here. A simple business trip which brought me to a small town which could change my life forever. You know what? <laughs> From the second I set foot in Beacon Pine, something about this place has held me captive. You see, change represents opportunity. It represents potential. It was change that helped me recognize the potential of this place. To see that the people of this town, despite suffering great loss, still held on to the things that made them special. Community, conviction, commitment, change. <laughs> Fate made a perfect match that day. Nothing is more important to you all than community. And Perennial Harvest is the community's first and foremost. The only way you made it through the foul harvest was an unshakable conviction. A conviction that a better tomorrow was just over the horizon. Perennial Harvest was founded on the conviction that we are the horizon. This festival is a symbol of our commitment to each other. To build to a he really is a thespian, isn't he? We now walk hand in hand into a future we will shape together. And that is what change is all about. Grabbing the future by the scruff of the neck and making things happen. Change is a choice. I am tickled pink that we will all be making that choice together. How great is that? Just imagine what we can accomplish. Uh oh. What was that? The crowd began to look around nervously. Don't worry, a little thunder isn't going to ruin this day. Everyone remain calm. Quickly flicked through his note cards. Where was I? Through all my travels, I have learned one true thing. One always reaps what they sow. We have all planted a lot of good in this town, and so it is with happy heart that I can proclaim. He raised his hands up to the heavens. Our harvest awaits! Oh no. At that moment, a merciless wall of impossibly cold air Damn it. through the crowd, instantly freezing everyone and everything it touched. For a man like William Kerr. This was a fitting way for things to end, on a stage, with an entire town frozen in rapt attention for the rest of time. The end. There's that ice again! Whenever I think we're getting close, it comes along and ruins everything! Maybe we should just quit? Maybe you should just close the book, walk away, and never think of me again! No, I... 
I don't mean that. We've got a little closer this time. We just need to try again. Please. Uh, I think that's the only option we have. All right. <laughs> Completely forgot we got a new word there. Sly cop interrogation. I think we're close to the end though, so I'll definitely be trying to go until the end of this. With a few crisp snaps, she roused Mr. Tolliver. What? What's going on here? You're you're that mode will girl. Please call me back. Sorry about all this. Oliver looked down and shifted a bit, testing his restraints. It seems there's been a mix-up. You see, I'm down here for the same reason you are. Juniper sent you here. She caught herself before letting the surprise manifest on her face. She'd already gotten him to reveal his relation to Grand. This was going to be easy. You know how Juniper is with her precautions? Operation Sparkplug has us all on edge. I guess she thought you needed some backup. But she sent a child? What better way to avoid prying eyes? Who would suspect a kid? I suppose that makes sense. Wriggled a bit in his restraints. Oh, I'm so sorry. Beck quickly removed the ropes. That had to be uncomfortable. A little, yeah. But you understand. We never know who to trust in this town. Mr. Rubbed the growing knot on his forehead. Very true. So it turns out we're both here to... Her hand, as if to prompt Mr. Tolliver to finish her thought. Destroy the evidence. Shook her head and clicked her tongue. Yep, the old gal is nothing if not thorough. Mr. Tolliver let out an amused huff in agreement. <laughs> she sure is. Can't blame her though. If anyone were to find out that we're going to destroy the source, well, we both know how bad that might be. No one will know anything once I finish cleaning things up down here. Played us like a damn fiddle. You sure you can finish this up on your own? Juniper trusted me for a reason. You can leave the rest to me. Good, there's one more loose end I'll go work on. Loose end? Oh, it's nothing really. The other day I had the radio on scan while restocking the candy shelf. And when you know it, I intercepted an odd phrase in perennial harvest transmission. Underground secrets. That's ominous. I think it might be a password, but Juniper dismissed it. Said it wasn't mission critical. What's the password for? We don't know. So we have a password and know where to put it. It's gotta mean something, right? Good thinking. You should probably go work that out. I've got this under control. That's a relief. Between you and me, this basement gives me the willies. <laughs> Heading for the stairs, Mr. Tolliver hesitated and turned to Beck with a puzzled look. She grinned and gave him a peppy wave. With a shrug, he continued up the stairs, whistling a jaunty tune. You guys catch that? Sure did. This whole time, Mr. Tolliver's had a candy shelf. But all he ever sells us is apples. <laughs> in disappointment. The password, Rolo. Well, sure, but once things are back to normal, I'll be having a word with Mr. Tolliver about that candy shelf. Fine, in the meantime, I've got an idea. She turned to the table and began tearing small scraps of paper. He said he heard a password on the radio. Any good spy transmission is never what it seems. Beck marked each scrap of paper and leaned back. Lean back. We just need to find the hidden meaning. Hmm, okay. What's another word for underground? Buried. Covered. Could it be a cover-up? Maybe it's one of those each letter is a number thingies. So U would be 21. N would be 14. D would be... Oh, it's an anagram. Nuncreed's Drugstore. Beck looked at Rolo with amazement. That makes sense. There is, again, that ending. Mr. Nuncreed said we knew too much. 
We went to an underground facility. Bro, that was incredible. Well, it's either that or Kren's new drug store. Yeah, I think you were right the first time. How do you do that? What can I say? I love Saffirs. Well, I guess we know where to go next. Uh, you scared me half to death. Sorry. You kids haven't seen Mr. Tolliver around, have you? Nope. He's got me waiting around like the last slice of pie. I swear that man would be late to his own funeral. I'll keep an eye out for him. I'm sure he's fine. Oh, let's see. There has to be a... Uh... Yep. Crooked. Luca tied a bent nail onto the line. If all you have is a hammer... This has to be the last thing. Shit. Easy there, buckaroo. You don't know your own strength. I... I let go at the right time. I swear I did. That one took a little bit more. It's a photo of you and Uncle Joseph. Let me see that. Huh. Look at those two young fools. How did it end up at the bottom of the pond? Who can say? Some things are just hard to explain. I miss Uncle Joseph. How come he doesn't come fishing with us anymore? He's busy with his new job at the Valentines. What's a new job got to do with him fishing with us? It's complicated. Like I said, some things are hard to explain. Wow. Okay, then for sure the next one's got to be the last one then. Just got to give this place a once over, making sure I don't miss something around here. Nope. Wait. Oh, nope. No way to check that. You're late, Augustus. Sorry, sister. Was caught up with work. Work? You? I had a few more details to lock down for the festival. Oh, what do you have to report? What is this insepid town festival really about? I think... I think Mr. Kerr really does just want to do something good for the town. He's actually a pretty nice guy. You should spend some time with him. I didn't pull strings installing you as mayor so that you could make friends. Your job is to help me figure out what Kerr and Perennial Harvest's true intentions are with this town. We have a responsibility. This is our father's town. Was. Excuse me? This was our father's town. He's gone, Eris, and he isn't coming back. Father left us with nothing but problems. Mr. Kerr came here and offered to help us. We accepted that help. We didn't agree to them turning Father's warehouse into a toxic dumping ground. That is just a temporary arrangement. The glow can be seen from our damned backyard. They are dumping their nasty little secrets on us. When this all inevitably goes wrong... Who do you think will be blamed? We have a new choice to make now, sister. This town is going to change whether we like it or not. Are we going to choose to be a part of that future or be forgotten in the past? It's a shame. Father named you Augustus, but you will always just be a Gus. Good night, Eris. I'll see you at breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> It's getting late, children. Indeed. Oh, wise alligator. Knowledge, he spat with a sneer. There exists a gulf between knowing something and being able to do a, a damn thing about it. Hmm. 
I do hate it when the villain makes a good point. Uh oh. Better go to Nuncreed's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just make sure we don't miss something around here. The bat is gone. We go down here. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. Impossible to get tired of that, that's for sure. <laughs> it's Solomon. Haven't seen you since, like, the start of the game, buddy. Solomon stood proudly at the entrance to the drugstore, holding a brown bag overflowing with black licorice. Hey, Solomon. We're looking for Mr. Nuncrease. Is he still in there? I'm afraid not. Then where do you get the candy from? You might say we have an arrangement. Sometimes it's the small pleasures in life. Though we might not always have family to rely on, Licorice has never let me down. Well, I can't say Licorice would be my first choice, but whatever floats your boat. You can tell a lot about a person by their choice of confection. Oh yeah, I guess. I like sour gobs. I am certain you do. I always wondered why Mr. Nuncreed kept Licorice in stock. He must eat enough of it to make it worthwhile. There are many ways to earn loyalty. For some, it's easy as cold hard cash. Well, he's right, it's locked. There's gotta be more clues. Okay, let's see. Uh... Yep. Have you ever seen anyone actually use this thing? Besides Mr. Nuncreed, no. Beck cupped her hands on the glass to peek inside. This is not a normal phone booth. It's got like a blinky keypad. Why would there be a blinky keypad? Kren's nude rug store. I mean, underground secrets. The password. Oh, we're gonna fall. All right, let's see here. Luca cracked his knuckles and entered the letters into the keypad. Underground secrets. Sounds like that did something. Great. Now what? I guess we. Ah! Inside of the phone booth dropped loose from its shell. Without even the space to panic, they closed their eyes, held their breath, and accepted their fate. Suddenly, the chaotic descent slowed to an effortless landing. It was unclear where they ended up, but at least it was solid ground. The air was stuck. It's like an elevator that starts really fast. I knew it! You knew that there was a secret hub full of strange tubes under the phone booth. Of course I did! Didn't I say that? No. I definitely thought it. Luca, do you remember when I said how cool it would be if the transdimensional conduits from Hank Atomic Issue 12 were real? Rollo, at one point or another, you said that about every technology ever discussed in Hank Atomic. That's why I'm such a good predictor. <laughs> it looks like each of these has something written on them. Mining Operations Alpha. You guys have mines here? Not that I know of. This town is all farms and fertilizer. And a series of tubes. Pa always says you can only trust a miner up to the point when they hit gold. Not sure how that wisdom applies to this exact situation. That's the thing about Pa, you don't always realize what he means until it's too late. Um, this suit has a broken mask. So, have we found our mystery warehouse creeper? We've at least found their hazmat suit. It walks like a nun creed and talks like a nun creed. Let's not jump to conclusions. Just saying. Perennial Harvest Main Office. Uh, that's where my mom works. What does she do? Science stuff. 
Is she involved in all this? We just moved here. How could she be involved? True. Valentine Fertilizer Warehouse. Senor, it's time to end stream. Nah, fam. I feel like we're the close to the end of this, so I'd rather like go until it's finished. <laughs> yeah. Why would Perennial Harvest have a tube going to the old Valentine place? This is starting to feel like something big. Plus, I don't think we even hit the three hour mark. <laughs> That's a lot of buttons. Stand aside, Earthlings. I've read enough Hank Atomic to know my way around sci-fi tech. Eeny, meeny, miny. Rella, what did you do? Nothing. I didn't even move yet. What was that? Hide. Where? There's nothing but weird tubes down here. Just get back. Shit. Shit. Shit! Awesome! <laughs> you all need to come with me now. We aren't going anywhere with you. Not until we get some answers. Mr. Underground Secrets. I told them it was an absurd password. But they love anything that makes them feel clever. They who? That's no matter. If I can keep you hidden until the festival, I might be able to save your skins. We don't care about our skins. Hold on now, I like my skin. This all stops now, Nuncreed. Joseph waited for a moment in silence. You sound just like him. Who? Walt. You don't get to talk about my dad. You know, your father and I were best friends back before. Before all this. That's a lie. But true. I used to bounce you on my knee. What happened? Same thing that always happens. Reality. Complications. Life. We were a team, Walt and I. An idealistic doctor and a bright-eyed pharmacist. Both hell-bent on helping folks. So you were his sidekick? No. We were partners. He helped the patients and I helped him. Yep, total sidekick. <sighs> Luca, I need you to know this. I need someone to know this. One day, Sharper Valentine came to us. Says he's got an opportunity. He'd found something he didn't quite understand. And he was willing to pay us both handsomely to help him understand it. And my dad said no. Your father and I both believed in helping people. But the thing I could never get him to understand was, it's a lot easier to help others if you're able to help yourself now and then. Classic sidekick into villain plotline. Walt loved being righteous almost more than he loved his family. He was wrong about one thing, though. When he begged me not to take Valentine's offer, he said, Joseph, if a person says yes one time to Sharper Valentine, he'll make sure they keep on saying yes to him until the day he's dead and gone. He shook his head wistfully. Sharper's long gone, but he's still got me saying yes. Is there a point to this sob story? Not really, no. Just an old man trying to delay what needs doing. I tried to keep you safe. I tried to keep you and Juniper out of this. But you forced my hand. What? You really don't know. My gran isn't out of this. She's been scheming right under your nose. Juniper? Seems like she's planning on crashing the town's party. She's going to disrupt the festival? Why would she... How does she know... Apparently, she knows a lot of things. What? Let's just say this isn't the only underground lair we busted into today. 
And honestly, hers is way cooler. She's got maps and explosives and bad intentions. Big man. Uh-oh. You need to tell me what she's going to do right now. She doesn't understand what she's messing with. I, uh... Tell me now, she's in danger, boy. I don't know. She had a map with a mark on the fountain in the town square. The fountain, but why would... A jolt of realization struck Mr. Nuncreed. She knows about the source. What the heck is the source? If she tries to destroy the source, it could catalyze and... Dear God, she's going to freeze us all. Yep, it happened uh, twice to us already. <laughs> Y'all need to run. Run where? Away. As far away from this town as you can get. Head west and don't look back. <laughs> Woo. That did not go how I expected. So... We're totally following him, right? Totally. See you on the other side. You good? Yep. I love this town. <laughs> Who knew she'd have so much adventure? The cold, hard truth. Beck leapt up, allowing the suction to yank her into the dark. Dimness eclipsed around her like the shutter of a camera, as she seemed to cover great distance in mere moments. Her only points of reference were glints of upcoming turns, which approached with frightening speed, only to carry her gracefully along. She heard the tinny, distant echoes of Rollo's glee. Once she stopped fighting against it, the ride was impossibly smooth. Then, all of a sudden, as if uh, back here, an instant, light blazed into view. A burst of wintry air snapped across her face, and she was flung out into the cold. We need to take a sip of water here. Oh, man. Ahem. <clears throat> Ooh. Oh, okay. Saw that manhole cover earlier, but... That was... intense? Yeah. I think I might have parted with some fluids in there. Any idea where we are? Somewhere cold. Doesn't look like it got any of us. Didn't feel like we traveled that far. So where did it all go? This place sucks. Why would anyone even want to blow something up out here? Only one way to find out, I suppose. We've got to catch up to Nuncreed. I think he went this way. Yes, but exploration. Well, I guess in this timeline we kind of don't get to learn the truth here. Even though we know it. This looks familiar, yeah. Maybe we can clear it off with the snow. No time. Nuncrete's getting away. Well, <laughs> game's just like, if you want to learn that mystery, you should have played that mystery. <laughs> okay, this is starting to feel really familiar. I may not be the most well-versed in all things Beacon Pines, but this does look like some sort of frozen replica of the town. Ah, I got it. It's so obvious now. Mr. Nuncrete is an alien. Rollo, stick with me here. This species can only live in sub-zero temperatures. Oh boy, here we go. The source is their base camp dimension, so naturally they keep it cold. We found it by traveling through those metallic wormholes back there. The final objective, kill us all and shapeshift into a beacon pine citizen of their choosing. You never really had me. But you very much lost me there. You get used to it, we should keep moving. Good old Rolo and his overactive imagination. They rounded the corner to the frozen town square. They spotted Mr. Nuncreed inching cautiously toward a pit at its center. He held his arms out gingerly, as if approaching a beast in the world. Whoops. I mean to cut it off there. <laughs> Upon closing the distance, Luca uh, thank you for the hydration. I didn't notice it. Oh man. Guess I'm too too wrapped up in the game <laughs> sometimes. Graham stood confidently at the edge, one arm outstretched over the abyss. Back to the abyss. A wheelbarrow had been emptied out. She held a lit torch, which flickered. 
Erica in the bitter wind. Juniper, don't. I know what you're thinking you're doing. But I assure you, this is not going to solve anything. If you drop that, you've doomed this whole town. Oh, it wasn't me who doomed this town. I've been watching you, Joseph. I know what you've done. You and your conspirators. Gran? What's happening? Luca, you and your friends need to leave right this moment. Listen to your grandma, Luca. This is between me and Juniper. You've got it all wrong, Juniper. Just hand over that torch. You don't understand what you're doing. How could I possibly trust you to do the right thing? Walt told me everything. He trusted you, and you betrayed that trust. Luca, did you know that this man's entire life is a lie? If it weren't for him, your father might still be alive. That's not true. Walt was like a brother to me. We just had different ideas about how to affect change. Very convenient that your way just happened to line your pockets. Now that's not fair. Man. The moment balanced on a knife's edge. Amid a blur of emotions and memories, <laughs> Luca's mind flooded with questions, the wind calmed, as if to give him the stage. Oh god. Oh god. I mean one of them is the true route, but I want to see the other route then first. Um, or weep. Weep sounds... Stillness, he began to weep. It was all just too much. Falling to his knees, Luca whimpered softly, but tears crystallized as they hit the snow. Gran stared at Luca for a moment with warm sympathy, remembering why this was all necessary. This will all make sense soon, Luca. Then everything can go back to normal. I promise. She stiffened up and brandished the torch at Mr. Nuncreed. You can't hide behind those people any longer, Joseph. Once their precious source is destroyed, we'll all see where their loyalties fall. Juniper, don't. Ignoring his final plea, Gran flung the torch into the deep darkness. Yep. <laughs> And... and exhaled in relief. Mr. Nuncreed moaned in resignation. The torch echoed as it ricocheted down the hole, punctuated with a thunderous thud. You see, Joseph, I've learned one very important lesson in life. If you want things to change, then you must be willing to... Before Gran could finish, the ground shook her to silence. Yep. <laughs> Gran only had time to spin around and run to Luca. Her attempt to shield him, an honorable but trifling act. Unflinching love, pitted against an unthinking horror. There was no contest. Her warm embrace froze in an instant. That is where they remain, fixed in place, forever. And so, our story ends. On this melancholy scene. Well, at least that explains why Gran blew it up. Because she thought that, like I said, it was enough energy. Or, but damn, she really screwed us all over. Of a misguided band of meddlers. The end. Well, that was dire. On the bright side, we finally figured out where all the ice is coming from. Now. We just need to find a way to deal with a mystic, unfathomable force of nature. Oh, time to hum. Because that's the only other option we have here, I think. And in the stillness, he began to hum. After the death of his father, 
Luca had trouble sleeping. Each night, his mother would sit at the foot of his bed and hum a gentle melody. It was the only thing that could calm his mind, the only thing that, however briefly, could make it all seem okay. That melody pervaded every memory Luca had of his mother, shivering in the raw snow. He began to hum it out loud. Please, woman, put down the torch, but not in the hole. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Whew. A few steps toward Luca was all she could bear before dropping to the snow herself. Through a flood of tears, she began to hum along, note for note. I honestly thought that it was going to automatically go off, but uh, turns out I needed to press the button. <laughs> How do you know? I'm so sorry, my little buckaroo. Buckaroo. Shut down. <laughs> the only people who call me that are my dad and your mother. Yep. <laughs> he could just make out the impression of a familiar face. He peered across the snowscape at the woman on her knees. Something about her was undeniably his mother. I knew it. Only smaller, older, changed. Mom? That's right, Buckaroo. Mom. Eleanor, I thought you were gone. You should have known I would never abandon my son. Eleanor looked down at Luca, tightening her embrace in an appeal for forgiveness. Yep, I frayin' called it. it. Was that chemical? She aged rapidly, and I, I realize unfortunately there's an ad in progress, but hey, that's what the vods will be for, you know. I'll definitely upload it to YouTube, both the parts. <laughs> Oh, you're a smart man, Joseph. I thought you'd have pieced it together by now. You were exposed. Mom, I don't understand any of this. What happened to you? Where did you go? Why did you leave me? I never left you. I was always right here, Luca. Why did you lie to me? You tore me up, Luca, but I did it to keep you safe. I thought that getting answers would help us both move on. But the more I discovered, the more I realized the danger we were in. Until perennial harvest was stopped, it was better if everyone thought I was gone. You could have trusted me. These are bad people, Luca. They won't stop until they get what they want. And they don't care who gets hurt in the process. Then, what do we do? We have to stop them. They can't be stopped. This was too big. I tried beating them at their own game. I'm done fighting fire with fire. First time in a long time. Her voice felt like her own again. Mom. 
Ooh. Just gotta do a really quick stretch here. Ooh. No more lies. I see now there's a better way to stop perennial harvest. The cold hard truth. Come on, everyone. We've got a party to crash. You understand. He always wins. Chapter 9. The Devil You Know. Seven months ago. Oh, there we go. <laughs> We're about to learn... Learn all the secrets here. Elnor Van Horn crept down the maze of sterile hallways under perennial harvest. She stopped in front of the large steel door marked Deep Engineering. No turning back now. She raised a trembling hand. The stolen keycard worked as promised, and the door bust opened with mechanical efficiency. She was immediately hit with the smell of disinfectant. It was some sort of laboratory. In one corner was a desk covered in papers. Across the room stood a tall metal pod with hoses protruding from its base. She rushed to the desk and began shifting through the piles of papers. They were experiment reports on something called Tanthus Liquamen. There were dozens of them, every one stamped, failed. Eleanor heard the sharp echo of footsteps approaching. She was out of time. Her eyes scanned the room, eventually landing on the strange pod, muttering a curse under her breath. She dashed over and dove inside. And that is what change is all about. Oh, thank God we missed... I mean, oh no, we missed the, the entire speech. Grabbing the future by the scruff of the neck and making things happen. Change is a choice. I am tickled pink that we will all be making that choice together. How great is that? This man is a liar. Excuse me? I will not. This town has a dangerous secret and perennial harvest only exists to keep it hidden. Nonsense. They picked up the whole town and moved it right under our noses. You aren't making any sense, dear. Mr. Kerr addressed the crowd with a sarcastic tone. Imagine such a thing. It's absurd and just plain impossible. They promised they could fix the foul harvest. They told us they would clean this place up. We just had to leave our town for a few days. But while they had us evacuated... Mrs. Hartford, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to... You're afraid of a lot of things, aren't you? You're sniveling, little worm. This is growing tiresome. A little help, please? Don't you all see? This festival is a sham! An excuse to have the whole town gather in one place... They're planning something awful. I don't know what, but these people are wicked. Don't listen to her. She has absolutely no proof. I am the proof. I am Eleanor Van Horn. Whispers filtered through the crowd. Well, aren't you just sneaky as the dickens? We all knew Valentine's fertilizer was too good to be true. And now this whole town is paying the price. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so sorry about this disruption. My associates will take care of this obviously disturbed woman somewhere comfortable. So that she can get the help she needs. She's not the one who's disturbed. You two-timing clown. Yeah, stick it to him. You all know where th there's something wrong with this town. This was just easier to look the other way. The truth is... <laughs> That's quite enough, Mr. Nuncreed. Torment dragged on Joseph Nuncreed's face. Yes, sir. Oh my god! He didn't die. He just he reversed his age. Take them away. No, I want them to see this. Ah, the ever temptuous Eleanor Van Horn. You've been quite the thorn in my side. Like a weed that's burrowed in where it doesn't belong. I must confess you look dreadful. Come on, 
Consider yourself in rare company you've managed to pull one on over me. It won't happen again. I knew you had some sort of plan to disrupt our little party. But alas, I expect something a bit more impressive than incoherent rambling. No matter, your failures are yours to bear. Mr. Kerr. Yes, sir. It's a shame it was cut short, but thank you for the rousing oratory. I will take it from here. Yes, sir, of course. You've done quality work for me, William. You can look forward to the recompense we agreed upon. Founder, you are most gracious. Thankfully, we can dispense with the formalities from here on out. He's gonna grow like Mario. You can all call me Sharper Valentine. Yep. <laughs> What? No. Uh, so you didn't see that coming. Good. Well, this is quite the improvement. Everything looks so much smaller now. Eleanor was right about one thing. This festival was a ruse. I wanted you all to witness my glorious return with your own eyes. Why does everyone look so downtrodden? This is a celebration, people. May it would be help if we set the mood. Mr. Kerr, be dear and reveal the sign. Ah. Ah, wonderful. Sharper, you malicious bastard. Malice. I'm glad you're back so I can tell you to your face. You destroyed this town. We ain't gonna let you get away with it again. Sorry, this is not the first, but not the time for audience participation. Some assistance, Mr. Kerr. You coward! <laughs> Does anyone else have something to contribute? I thought so. Did you all truly believe you could be free of me? A town of complete and utter fools. You people should be celebrating my return. You're clearly lost without me. And that leads me nicely to my children. <laughs> Daddy? I gave you both the greatest gift a parent can give. The opportunity to prove yourselves in my absence squandered. To say I am disappointed would be an understatement. But I... Silence, Augustus. An adult is speaking. I don't know which is worse. A son who's completely hopeless, or a daughter with such potential who inevitably lets me down. Eris, you fail me with admirable consistency. Thankfully, I was counting on it this time. Father, I have been wasting time, my dear. What have you accomplished? I was focused on cementing our legacy. Legacy? Who needs a legacy when you can just live forever? But what about... It's all right, kiddo. I'm afraid you suffer from a complete lack of imagination. There's just no helping it. Now then, where is Joseph? You didn't take the opportunity to slip off, did you? Ah, there he is. Everyone should give him a hand. None of this would have been possible without Joseph. I think you've said enough. Nonsense. The people deserve to know how helpful and loyal you've been. I only did what I did because he left me no choice. You always had a choice, Joseph. You were simply too weak to take it. No matter. Cheer up. You're about to be rich beyond your wildest dreams. You should follow Mr. Kerr's example. 
I found him. He was in a sorrier state than any of you. <laughs> See? <laughs> An aging actor desperate to recapture his youth. He played his part, and soon he'll be able to play the leading man again. Forever, in fact, if he remains loyal. That goes for all of you. Well, those who haven't already frittered away my goodwill. Deacon Pines is mine again. And I am willing to share its spoils in exchange for absolute loyalty. Are you saying William Kerr is never in charge of perennial harvest? Ha! Huh. You think that puffed off blathers... Blatherskite could have accomplished all of this. Don, I suppose it's time for your big exclusive. Addressed the crowd with indignant pride. He'd planned this moment for so long that now, at the deed's fruition, it almost felt frivolous. You see, I needed a figurehead to hold things down while I orchestrated my return. Someone to misdirect, lie, and bilk this town for a spell. So I invented William Kerr. Take your bow, you've earned it. Mr. Kerr flourished a preposterously elaborate bow. They're all clones, I tell you. Patrick C. Montesquieu, thespian extraordinaire at your service. Yep. <laughs> that, that seems about right. Founder, I just want to thank you again for this opportunity. It surely was the role of a lifetime. Wait. So this Bill Kerr was a patsy the whole time? <laughs> He was a patsy. <laughs> now that your secret is out in the open, what's to stop this town from rising up against you? Oh, that's the delicious part. Fear. Thanks to our clipboards, I know that each and every person in this town fears most. And I will make those fears manifest for anyone who steps out of line. The choice is simple. I'm not afraid of you. Ha. Huh. The young hero. I've kept my eye on you, boy. You and your friends made a habit of disrupting my plans. What a pity if things would have gone a bit differently. You might have had your moment of triumph. But it's fate for you. You can't do this. Oh, but I can. I have one. Never underestimate what a great man can do given time. And now time is my plaything. Perhaps the most expensive thing I've ever bought. But well worth it. Ha! Huh. Sharper coughed up one final laugh and cracked his knuckles. <laughs> Enough chit chat. Let's get to work, shall we? Jeez. And so Sharper set about remaking the town in his own image. The fertilizer factory soon reopened for business. Sales rose steadily as more and more farmers across the countryside began to swear by its miraculous properties. Shit. Deacon Pines became famous. A secretive town that, for the right price, shared its gifts with all. Gifts that became more and more necessary in a world where winters grew longer and longer. Oh, Jesus. The end. This is wrong, but things are becoming clearer now. You can feel it, right? We can't let Sharper win. He might just be the key to this whole thing. Let's see. Okay. Wait. Yep, here it is. Okay. Let me make sure that it doesn't show up anywhere else. Okay. There was a malice lurking behind those eyes. Here we go. Time to change fate. Like a trap ready to spring. <clears throat> I just want this to be all to be over. Of course, I'm sure we'll all work out soon enough. I should get going. I told Roxy I'd check for Rolo at the treehouse. Of, of course. Luca, you know your dad and I were good friends back in the day. You can come to me with anything. Anything at all. Huh. Yeah, last time I did that. You put me down the chute. 
right? At this point in the story, I have definitely talked to everybody here. Right? And here we are. These festival decorations are a bit humdrum. Now, if I were to throw a festival, it would be a thing to behold. I agree, this is all more than a little sad. It's worse than sad. It's boring. What if we did a little something to spice things up? Now I'm listening. You know that festival sign waiting to be unveiled? It'd be a shame if someone... Two scurried off, eagerly formulating a plan. Oh, wise alligator, what should I do? He looked down and muttered in a gruff voice. Mama always told me my problems would look smaller once I grew up. But my problems always seem to grow right along with me. Heavens, I sense big trouble ahead. <laughs> you got that right, lady. Okay, yeah, we've definitely talked to just about everyone. I think that's the only new thing around here, maybe. Oh. Hey, Griffin, has Rolo been by? I haven't seen him all day. Sure, I'll show up safe and sound. And when he does, tell him there's a strawberry chocolate double scoop waiting for him. On the house. He'll like that. I'm trying to remember what was happening in the timeline at this point. <laughs> I think Rolo went missing. When we were trying to find him. That's when we originally told Nun Creed everything we knew. Identify yourself, please. Nelly Modewell. I work here now. I'm unable to locate you on our staff roll. Oh, I don't officially start until tomorrow. Mr. Kerr said I could come in early tonight to get a few things done. Hold, please. Clearance authorized. Thank you. Our harvest awaits. Wow. <laughs> you get a wrench to the noggin sticking up on a guy like that. Don't scare a man while he's junkin', Sonny. Evening, Jeff. Isn't it kind of late to be junkin'? I might as well ask the same thing of you. Find anything good? Ah, ever since perennial harvest moved in, even the junk is trash. You learn a lot about a person by looking at what they throw away. With this bunch, it's all shredded paper and coffee cups. Well, I'd better get going. I didn't see nothing if you didn't see nothing. See what? Exactly. To the treehouse! Wait, perhaps we got the final word. Nope. Rollo? He aired a long holler into the woods. Rollo. Huh. Rollo, wherever you are, I hope you're okay. Luca felt his eyes getting heavy and plopped into the beanbag. He conceded to its lumpy embrace. Once again, Luca found himself in a vast black expanse. Another nightmare. Time, he knew exactly where to go. He took a single confident step forward. Oh. The world flickered and pulsed. He found himself standing in front of the frigid air of a blazing campfire. The source. He plopped down cross-legged and gazed into the cold flame, waiting. Soon enough, the fire began to die out, popping sporadically, until all that was left was a single ember. <laughs> Connect the embers. Just like in Dark Souls. Luca stood up and dusted himself off. He plucked the glowing ember from the cold ash, examined it, and slid it into his pocket, a keepsake. The voice of his father spoke behind him. You made me proud, Buckaroo. Luca turned to face him. Dad, what is this place? A warm grin grew across his father's face. A place where everything that has been and everything that could be all linked together. Luca found himself staring at his father's face, 
trying as hard as he could to memorize every single detail. Wait? For what? Another voice spoke out as Lucas Doppelganger stepped forward. That's up to you. Without knowing why, Luca began to weep. Is... is any of this real? Are you real? Uh, that's a good question. Honestly. I'm real. <laughs> um. I'm as real as the part of you that misses me. Luca turned to look at the older version of himself. And you? The doppelganger choked back tears. I'm as real as the part of you that's angry he's gone. Oh, uh, okay. Does that make sense? Yes, it's Evangelion. That the finale. <laughs> All right, Dad, let's do it. Luca was startled from his dream by a banging on the floor. Are you in there? A commanding voice rumbled from below. Just as Luca sprang to lock the entry hatch, the door knocked open. Chapter 5. Oh my god, all the way to Jesus chapter 5. <laughs> Luca stumbled back. He heard the rope ladder creak under significant weight. Keeping his eyes fixed on the hatch, he inched backward to the balcony. As his hand grasped the door handle, Luca froze. A large figure clumsily wriggled up through the hole. Stop right there, criminal scum. You violated the law. Pay the court a fine or serve your sentence. Or I'll... Sheesh. I know it's dark and all, but I figured you'd recognize me. Who are you? Large figure cocked its head inquisitively. It's <laughs> Stop now or I'll clobber you with a baseball bat. Whoa, 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 take it easy. Luca, I need to get your eyes checked. It's me, Rolo. Nice try, but I didn't know you aren't Rolo. You're like one of his random uncles or something. Where is he? <laughs> Uncle, Luca, quit messing around. It's me. It's it. If it's really you, prove it. Flaming chicken coop, Luca. His jaw dropped. He peered more closely at the man standing in front of him. Something about him was undeniably Rolo, only bigger, older, changed. How? What happened to you? When I was running away, I ran into more people in those yellow suits. They grabbed me and dragged me away. What? Where did they take you? Don't know. They threw a bag over my head. It was cold and smelled like a swimming pool. I think it was an underground lab or something. They made my hands all big. Look. Rolo proudly presented his hands to Luca. Pretty sweet, right? I, I mean, it wouldn't be my first pick for a superpower. But beggars can't be choosers. Rollo, it wasn't just your hands. My feet, too? Dang, Pa just made me new shoes. Wait, Luca, why are you so small? Luca moved to the side and <clears throat> pointed Rollo to his reflection in the balcony window. What the? His hands shot up to his face. Holy Toledo! Rollo, what did they do to you? They made me drink some sort of green crud. Ew. Actually, it wasn't too bad. It kind of tasted like licorice. I passed out and woke up like this. Ah, okay. And then I sort of smashed open my cage and escaped. Well, you smashed open a cage? Kinda. At least I think I did. It's all a bit of a blur. They had you in a cage. Who are these people? I don't know who did this to you, but we're going to fix it. Fix it? This is awesome. Well, I'm just glad you're safe now. Luca, you don't need to worry about me. Sure, I got snatched, but look at it this way. I got snatched. I know where snatched people go. We may finally have a lead on what happened to your family. Maybe you're right, but this all seems dangerous. Danger, ha! Rolo shadow boxed a few jabs. I'll take them all on. Hey, fellas. What's up? 
Yeah, take cover. Did I come at a bad time? Who the heck are you? This is Beck. Sorry, something truly bizarre just happened, and I need help. I didn't know where else to go. So you're just hanging out here with your large adult friend? <laughs> no, this is my buddy Rolo. This is your missing friend. One and the same. He seems a little... old. I'll have you know, this is a recent development. What the heck does that mean? I'm sorry, you're the one who just showed up out of nowhere. So we'll be asking the questions here. That's fair. How did you find us? Your silly little treehouse? I think you mean our silly little mission control. Hate to break it to you, but your secret path isn't so secret. And I could hear you racket from a mile away. See, Luca, this is why we need to improve security around here. <laughs> Not now, Rolo. Beck, you said something bizarre happened? Yeah, but... She shot a nervous glance at Rolo. Anything you can say around me, you can say around Rolo. This has been a weird day all around, hasn't it? Yep. Beck's eyes narrowed. Okay, so it all started when I made it back home. My first order of business was to try and salvage my hair. So I dyed it with some stuff from the chemistry set my mom gave me. Okay, just need to play it cool. I hope no one notices. Notices what? Oh, nothing, I was just... Come over here and let me have a look. Oh, honey, what in the world did you do to your hair? I just kind of felt like a change. This is going to take forever to grow out. You were the one who said that change was a good thing, right? I was talking about your mother's new job. I was talking about us moving. Well, I guess I just took your lesson to heart. Ilona tried to put on a smile. Before I forget, I came up here to tell you that Nellie had to go into work. Tonight? Her and Mr. Kerr decided it would be good for her to get some things done before tomorrow. That Kerr guy seems like a grade-A creep. Beck. He is! Him and his weird cult of personality. You are not going to ruin this job for Nelly. It means too much to her. Oh, I know exactly how much it means to her. It means enough to her to exile her daughter to this Potunk town. This place sucks. The people are weird. You just don't know them yet. It's always cold. We're in the mountains. You'll get used to it. I can't even pick up a single decent radio station on the radio. It's all banjo music and farm reports. You know, I grew up in a town not that different from this one. Is that why you're better at talking to plants than people? Okay. So here's what we're going to do. First of all, you're grounded. What? In the morning, I'll have Nellie come and see what we can do about fixing your hair. You need to look presentable for the festival. But not another peep. I know moving is hard, honey, but that doesn't mean you have to make yourself miserable all the time. Other people seem to have that covered for me. Oh, and if you decide to rebel and by dyeing your hair more... A sly grin and Beck's hair. I'll just shave it off for you. Think of how rebellious you'll look then. Very funny. Thank you. Good night, sweetie. Good night, Mom. Wait, 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 wait. First of all, this town does not suck. Second, you need help because you got grounded? No. I'm sorry you got in trouble. It's my fault your hair got screwed up in the first place. Don't worry about it. I actually kind of like this look. Great. Can we get back to the story now? The next part... <clears throat> the next part is the important bit. I have this radio I upgraded with my mom and I was too angry to sleep. So I tried to dial in something worth listening to. Mr. Kerr, are you there? Mr. Kerr? Yes, I'm busy. What is it? Apologies, I have the founder on the line. Batch him through immediately. One moment. Hello, sir. It's nice to hear from you. 
skip the pleasantries. What's your report on our new lead researcher of deep engineering? Nellie Modwell seems to be integrating nicely. At this very moment, she's working to help us meet our deadline. She offered to work overtime before I even had a chance to suggest it. Excellent. And you have faith that she's capable of finishing the work left by her predecessor. Her work must be complete before the festival. I'll make sure she stays day and night until it's completed. Good. You know how I feel about loose ends. Yes, sir. Once she's finished with the work, you need to make a determination regarding her. Long-term prospects in the company. Immediately, sir. I usually have more time to fully bring people into the fold. We're in the end game, Bill. After your failures with Dr. Prescott, you can't afford to take any risks. Of course, sir. No loose ends, sir. Once she finishes the work, she'll either leave the office completely committed to perennial harvest, or she won't leave at all. Perfect. Sir, if I might suggest, maybe we should delay just for a bit. Oh? It's just we seem to be rushing to hit this festival deadline. And rushing into things has caused some issues in the past. I see. Please understand that I just want what's best for you. I am eternally grateful for all the work you've done for me. Bill, I'll make this very clear for you. I brought you in to make things run smoothly, not to have opinions. Of course, sir. Chin up, Bill. You are only a few days away from having everything you ever dreamed of. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Whoa. Yeah. Just so we're clear, when they said loose ends, they were talking about murder, right? Like, actually killing someone? Capital murder? <laughs> Who's this founder? I was hoping you guys would know. <clears throat> uh, as far as we know, Kerr is the top banana at Perennial Harvest. He sounded scared of this founder guy. So we have an even topper banana on the field. What the hell is my mom caught up in? Has he talked about has she, has she talked about the job much? Not really. She said she was going to come in and continue the work of someone she respected. Luca, do you think that body at the Wehara house was that person Beck's mom came to replace? That would make sense. Beck, it seems like Nellie's predecessor got um loose ended. I'm getting that impression. So we need to get your mom out of there before the festival happens. That's two days away. Won't she just come home after work? Creep on the radio said they were going to hold her there until then. So if she's not coming out, we got to go in and get her. A large sheet of paper out of her pocket and slammed it on the floor. Maybe this will help. You have blueprints? Well, it's really just a welcome map from my mom's pH orientation day, but it shows the layout. Sure looks like blueprints to me. Look, there's the reception area. There's a big room marked Founder's Office. It even has the exits marked. Guys, guys, guys. We have a deadline. We have an objective. We have blueprints. You realize what this is, right? With excitement. I think we're heisting. This is officially a heist. <laughs> Chapter six. Oh... You know, I thought we were, like, really close to the end, but I'm starting to think there still might be a, a good amount of time left in this game. And, uh, I've already gone pretty far. Let's see, what time is it? Uh, you know... Actually, since we started early, it's not super late, so... I'll keep going. Maybe... Maybe this is, you know, we'll be closer to the end, but who knows? I'll at least do, like, you know, one more chapter, I think. Huddled around that small map, formulating a plan to infiltrate the headquarters of Perennial Harvest. It would be no small feat. A modern facility equipped with all manner of technology. Not to mention the swarm of clipboards that would most certainly be scattered throughout. By the time the sun began to peek through the car window used as a makeshift balcony door, all were in agreement. This could just work. Oh man. The final day before the festival would be used to prepare. They'd need to pull every resource at their disposal. Pull every favor with a thread. Even enlist 
some unsavory characters around town with important tasks only they were suited for. Luckily, there was enough ill will and mistrust toward Perennial Harvest that alliances could be found at a bargain. Lucifer <laughs> and Rollo rubbed their eyes as they exited the treehouse. They hadn't slept at all that night. There was no time. The festival was to begin in one day, and they each had their assignments. Yeah, I think I think this might be it, actually. So, all right, quick recap: Rollo, you're gonna talk to Roxy cordially. Without her and Fitz, this whole thing could go bust. Me cordially is my middle name. Uh huh. And how do you plan to explain your new? Vaguely at Rollo's sizable figure. Circumstance. Ah, uh, she'll be so happy I'm alive she won't even notice. And Beck, you sure Alona won't just shoot this whole thing down when she hears it? She'll listen. When she understands the danger Nelly is in, the danger we're all in, then will make sense. Okay. That leaves me with Jeff and then Iggy. How are you going to persuade them? I'll think of something. She looked at each other with sleepy confidence and nodded. Well, Godspeed. <laughs> Whoops, whoops, whoops. Nope, can't talk to you. Did I get any new words for this yet? Nope. Luca gently baited a feather whoops. onto good first. Nope. <laughs> Man's is not moving. Yeah, I gotta look for Undaunted, he shook his head. Over? No. Endings are merely a state of mind. This doesn't end until I give up. Wow. I admire the conviction. But can he really pull through? Yeah, this... I'm, I really feel it. I feel like this is like the end. So let's do it. Gotta find Iggy and Jeff. Wherever they may be. One more for the road. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm too easily entertained sometimes. You ever wondered why an agricultural company employs an army of survey takers? The clipboards, they say they're just trying to make us happy. Do they want to make us happy? Or just figure out what makes us happy? An important distinction. Well, as it turns out, they tried to figure out, well, they did figure out what all our fears were, so. Hey, Jeff. Hey, what can I do for you? Well, I know how much you hate perennial harvest. Hey, it's a strong word. Oh, sorry, I mean, I didn't say it was the wrong word. <laughs> gotcha. So we're going to break into their headquarters, and I thought you might be able to help. Ellie, <laughs> I knew you kids were all right. Great, so you'll help. Not a chance. <laughs> but give me one good reason I should risk my hide aiding and <laughs> abating you rascals. Junk. Yeah, what of it? Suddenly I've got more junk than a king has copper. Ain't interested. Luca wasn't ready. He shouted out. Uh. Crooked. Ah, they're all crooks. Like cockroaches. Stamp one out and another one comes scurrying along to take its place. Fight! I've done enough fighting for one lifetime and more than my share of losing. Sam's come to hang up the gloves. Hide. Jeff's brow perked up. What'd you say? Go ahead and hide then. Luca carried on with vigor. Let a bunch of kids do what needs to be done. We're not afraid. Scowl faded with a sigh. Say what you will about old Jeff and they'll do. You'll never hear him say I hid from nothing. 
<laughs> there we go. Honestly, I thought shit was going to be the answer there, but apparently not. What was it you kids needed? Some sort of disguise. I got just the thing. And while we're at it, that crate should come in handy. This ain't going to free, you know. I'm thinking fat bags of sour gob should cover it. Put it on my tab. <laughs> Done. Swing my first thing in the morning. Let's go. I can't really like interact with anyone around here. Only got one objective in mind. Oh. Hey Tish, looks who it is. Luke, are you here to try and tickle us to death again? Look, just hear me out. We're listening. Iggy, I know we've both been giant bags of shit to each other. You're not wrong, but lately life has been kind of strange, you know? Things have been weird around here, so I'm offering a truce and asking you for help. What do you say we... Break our hostilities, at least for now. We do like breaking things, even if a truce means less breaking things. What if I tell you that there was a way to have a truce and break stuff? Go on. I need you to cause a distraction so I can sneeze into Perennial Harvest HQ. My my, Luca Van Horn, I'm impressed. And after this is all done, maybe you and Tish can come hang out at the treehouse sometime? Fine. But not because we want to see your crappy treehouse. We just like to cause chaos. It's all coming together. All the stuff we've learned. Did you hear that, Tish? He invited us to hang out in the treehouse. <laughs> I never expected this day to come. How wonderful. <laughs> I'll be. Confident. 100% reason to remember the name. Rolo took a few vigorous breaths and shook out his arms. <laughs> Just say calm, Rolo. You can do this. Got your delivery here. A delivery? I don't have anything in my notes about a delivery. One moment. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but there's no delivery scheduled for this morning. Right. That's because this goes directly to the founder. He asked that it be kept secret. You know how the founder can be. I suppose we can leave this one off the records. Easy peasy. Our harvest awaits and such. <laughs> Our harvest awaits. Package here for the founder. Oh, I didn't hear anything about... Yeah, this is a need-to-know kind of thing. Ah, oh, I'll just check. This goes directly to the founder. I don't have time to fill you in. Oh, I see. If you could just complete this form. Every time with the forms. 
Look, if you want to explain the founder why I'm late, well, this is your funeral. I'm sorry. What did you say your name was again? I'm... Our harvest awaits! Sir? That's a restricted area. Excuse me, sir. Our harvest awaits! Ready to light the candle dish? Yep. Stuck on this perennial ham fist. What was that? Just open the damn door. I've got a job to do. I... I should check on that noise. Oh, come on! Just buzz me in already. Okay, okay. <laughs> Phew! That was close. Our harvest awaits? Hey, I figure... When in doubt, stick with the classics. Well, that was a close one. But you pulled it off. Nice work, Rolo. Alright, everyone knows what to do. Yep, deep engineering is to the north. I'll go with Beck. In case she needs some muscle. I'll head east to the Founder's office. You two be safe. That's odd. There's not even any cups for the water. Uh, oh boy. Oh jeez. Okay, well. Might as well. Oh god. You can do a hallway to nowhere. What's going on here? Solomon? Solomon stopped in his tracks. Luca? Why are you doing here? It's a very long story. Are you okay? A fear of confusion flashed across Solomon's face. His words rushed out dramatically. I'm most certainly not okay. Someone, some strange people grabbed me and... Were they in hazmat suits? Yes, how did you know? They brought me here and locked me up when they were distracted. I ran. Dang, okay, you should stick with me. We've got a plan. Briefly faltered. We? Yeah, Rolo and Beck are headed to deep engineering. Thank heavens you found me. We've got to get out of here. We can't leave just yet, but they'll catch us again. I've got to do something first. When you were running, did you happen to see a door marked Founder? Founder? Why are you looking for him? I'm not. I just need to get into that office. Now that you mention it, I do think I saw a door that said Founder. It was just down this way. To notice a plaque above the door. Office of the Founder. Knocking comes with consequence. Oh, here it is. So it is. It's pretty lucky that I ran into you, or else I might have missed it. Truly fortunate. Lock. Solomon leaned forward to examine the mechanism. Regrettably, it seems to be some sort of electric lock. He's trying to cover his ass. I don't see how you, how we, could possibly defeat a lock like that. And looked at his watch. Let's just wait a minute. Damn. I don't know what that sort of funny business you're up to, but I like it. <laughs> now, from one legend to another, I tip my hat to you. Howdy. Good afternoon. How did you do that? It's good to have friends. Quick, let's get inside before someone spots us. Rolo, I'm in. As expected, there's a control panel. Great time in. We're stuck at a locked door marked 24601. Need you to get us through. But if someone catches us, we should get out of here. I'm not leaving my friend, Solomon. On the computer screen, a green cursor blinked in a password field. 
Surely you don't have to wait to get around the password. Hmm. Out his best guess, underground secrets. The screen blinked to life. Columns of green numbers glowed on a black background. How, how did you just guess that? Oh, it's this absurd password Rolo heard when he was down here before. It's funny how someone arrogant enough to call themselves the founder uses such a basic password. Or they were thinking several moves ahead, not expecting anyone to guess something so simple. These villain types always end up outsmarting themselves. Solomon's jaw clenched into a <laughs> your powers of deduction are as impressive as your luck. Rollo, I think this should do it. Bingo bango, doors open, Luca, you never fail to impress. What is that slippery loud even doing down there? We have a friend whose mom is in trouble. We're here to get her out. I see. Okay, Luca, I think we're close. The next door is marked 13806. This one opens the lock. Crap, we've got company. Luca must go faster. One sec, I can't think with all this noise. Here it is. Go, go, go. Curse these fumbling hands. My apologies, Luca. Don't beat yourself up. I know you were just trying to help. <laughs> God. <laughs> I'll look at them go. Aw, oh, man. Oh, water cups. Roll up. <laughs> Rolo, are you okay? Rolo, come in. Mr. Kerr approached with a sneer and spoke into his walkie-talkie. You can turn off the alarms. They're trapped. Self-satisfaction, he called into the hallway. That, my dears, is a dead end. Nowhere to run. Rolo, where are you? Are you okay? Yeah, I think we lost him. Making our way back to Nelly's office. Okay, you two rebel rousers are coming with us. Nope. Oh! <laughs> Make a break for it! Nice. Did that little shit just kick me? Don't just stand there after them. Okay, I think that worked. Roxy and Fitz have them on a wild goose chase. I'm having trouble following what just happened. Like I said, it's good to have friends. Rollo, how long do you think Roxy can distract them? How long can Roxy keep someone so pissed off they can't see straight? Let's just say we've got time. Entering Nelly's office right now. Mom. Oh, honey, what did you do to your hair? Thought you'd be happy I finally used the young chemist lab kit. Sure have a knack for making me incredibly proud in the most frustrating ways. We need to get you out of here. We? Who's your adult friend? Oh, I'm not an adult, adult. Ever heard of a growth spurt? I had more of a growth spew. No, that's not possible. Substantial banding on the enamel of the molars consistent with Tempest liquamine exposure. Is that what you call the gunk they forced me to drink? You drank it? Oh. Oh no. They told me it was only being tested on plants. Oh, Beck, sweetie, I promise I didn't know. Mom, what the hell is this place? What's go what going on? <laughs> I was brought here to work on the discovery of a lifetime. A novel chemical compound was discovered under beacon pines in a wellspring they called the Source. They named it Tempest Liquamine. It pulls energy from its surroundings in order to fundamentally alter matter's relationship to time. It was the secret to Valentine's fertilizer. They harvested the Source, infusing small amounts of Tempest Liquamine into the product. It worked wonders, drastically accelerating plant growth. Crops would be ready to harvest in a fraction of the time, but it led to complications. The foul harvest. Perennial harvest came in to clean up the mess to succeed where Valentine failed. But Tempest Liquamine is rebellious. Rebellious? You can think of it as a manifestation of change itself. It's volatile by its very nature. 
No, the more you try to force it to do a specific thing, the more it resists, yes. I can relate to that. My role was to finish the work of my predecessor, Dr. Prescott. Harnessing Tempest Liquid Mine to reliably manipulate an organism's age. Just imagine how many people we could feed. Mr. Kerr was very insistent that they achieve a successful result before today's festival. But you didn't, right? You know how much I love a good puzzle? I poured myself into the problem. It wasn't long until I discovered oddities in Dr. Prescott's notes. Oddities? They contained obvious errors, mistakes that someone of his reputation would never make, so I fixed them and... And now I get to replace my entire wardrobe. I really am truly sorry. Eh, those clothes were all hand-me-downs anyway. Sounds like Dr. Prescott figured it out, got cold feet, and intentionally sabotaged his own work. I had considered that possibility, I've sent a letter asking him to clarify his thinking. Mom, Dr. Prescott is dead. Kerr had killed him. What? I overheard them talking about it on the radio. It's why we gotta get you out of here. I just... Like, now. Wait, the file. I finally solved the chemical equation allowing direct control of aging. Mr. Kerr picked it up just before you came. All the more reason we gotta get Hightail it. Luca, we've got Dr. Modewell heading on your way now. Roger that, be careful. Oh, <clears throat> All right, everything's on track. What is your plan for escape? We'll go over everything when they get here. In the meantime, maybe we can dig up some more info. It looks like the founder was helping Kerr plan the festival. Why would such a secretive leader be obsessed with a party? Only time will tell. Still warm. He must have been in here recently. Yes, he also needs books to sit. Malice 80 proof whiskey. <laughs> a hard drink for a hard man. Wow, even his alcohol is arrogant. And you should just smother you right now. What was that? I said I shouldn't bother you right now. Don't be silly, you're no bother at all. <laughs> Let's see what else this bad boy has on it. Security system, time card logs, payroll. You know, for being so evil, this guy sure is boring. Yes, you ain't. Huh? Oh, nothing. Dang, this must be the good stuff. They're all locked. Perhaps he's not as careless as you suspected. I don't know about that one, Solomon. Quote unquote. I'm really sorry you got dragged into this mess, Solomon. You needn't worry about me. Well, I feel bad either way. We're gonna get you out of this, I promise. Quivering lip. A smile crawled across Solomon's face. They heard the trampling of frantic footsteps from the hallway. Lock it, lock it, lock it. <laughs> Locked. I was close. When we left Nellie's office, it was swarming with clipboards. We barely got away. Did they follow you? Rollo. Before we start tossing blame around, it is possible someone ordered a pizza. <laughs> We'd love to hear your thoughts. Definitely not pizza. What now? Don't look at me. I'm officially retiring from the heisting business. We're so sorry for the inconvenience. We just have a few quick questions. Just let me think. Can someone watch the door? Of course. Everyone else huddle up. Oops. I think this little caper has gone on long enough. Solomon, no. Hush now, child. The adults are speaking. Dr. Modewell, a brief reintroduction is in order. We've never met in person, but we have corresponded. See, it was I who hired you. Solomon, the pathetic orphan child, the powerful enigmatic founder, Sharper, the fallen progenitor, progenitor who created this town, perennial harvest, valentine fertilizer, all connected by a single thread, yours truly. 
But that's... Ah, uh, yes, now you've got it. Tempest Liquamine, you discovered how to reverse the process. Oh, he clapping. <laughs> very good, Dr. Mode. Well, very good. Though the discovery wasn't intentional. And the effects went a little too far for my tastes. That's why you needed me to finish Dr. Prescott's work. Which you did admirably. Mr. Kerr, the vial, please. May I present to you the eighth wonder of the... Wow, this stuff sounds pretty valuable. Be careful, you fool. You have no idea what you have in your hand. Actually, we do. You just did a whole evil villain monologue thingy about it. Gosh, maybe I'll have a taste. Seize him! Luca! Over here! Move another inch and I smash it. You have no plan. I'll smash it, I swear. Fine, risk killing us all. Or if you're lucky, nothing happens, then what? We capture you and grant you much less leniency. But I give you my word, if you hand it over now, none of you will be harmed. You're a smart girl, Beck. But there's no shame in being outwitted by someone smarter than you. You both know there is only one way this ends. To Nelly shakily, with a dispirited nod, Nelly sighed in defeat. Beck slowly approached Solomon. That's a good girl. Beck, don't do it. We can we can't trust that jerk. I'm sorry, he's right. With apprehension, Beck conceded. I bet you that vial is faulty. Solomon That's not the finished vial, product, I bet. Mr. Kerr, you have allowed yourself to be humiliated by a group of children. Report to my office tomorrow for a performance review. From Kerr's face. Of course, sir. But first, you have to make a speech. Trot out there and give me the introduction I deserve. And don't forget to smile. Yes, sir. And to think all of this thanks to the efforts of Mr. Van Horn. I don't understand. How is this all because of me? Uh, I said, Mr. Van Horn, silly child. Dr. Walt Van Horn. Your father was always a thorn in my side. I offered him an opportunity to be a part of something great. But the fool was blinded by righteousness. He even broke into my laboratory in an attempt to sabotage my work. Shook his head with gratification. But the universe has a funny way of correcting course. By meddling with a force he didn't understand, Walt showed me its true potential. As fate would have it, Luca, your father's dying act was to grant me eternal life. Well, that's my cue. After the, festi the festivities and my subsequent ascension, I'll return to deal with you all. Until then, I suggest you use this time to reflect on the magnitude of your failure. E3, keep post outside the door. Well, crap. I can't believe Beck sold us out like that. I'm not sure she had any other choice. So what now? What's the plan? I don't have one. Of course you do. You always have a plan. Rollo. You just need some time. Rollo, it's over. We lost. Nelly was staring at the floor, deep in thought. Sorry, Luca. Give me a minute to calm my mind. Hey, I'm sorry, Luca. I did what I had to do. I know, it's just we were so close. I got a feeling that eventually Solomon will get what's coming to him. Time wounds all heals. Well, time seems like less of an issue for him now. Can't interact with those files yet. 
Luca, there's something you should know. After Mr. Kura locked me in that office, I had nothing but time and curiosity. I poked around a bit hoping to find a means of escape, but I found something else. A note hidden in a false drawer. What sort of note? Dr. Prescott must have sensed this time at perennial harvest was growing short, so he left behind a letter with the hope it would be found by his successor. It was a confession of sorts. He left it for me, but its contents... Luca, I think they were meant for you. Why? What did it say? It was about an incident with your mother. Dr. Prescott found her in his lab with a stolen keycard. There was an accident. She has been exposed to extreme amounts of Tempest liquamine. Did she... Is she... She survived. Dr. Prescott decided to help her recover. He no longer trusted Perennial Harvest, so he kept her whereabouts a secret. Over time, your mother led him to reconsider the purpose of scientific discovery. Science is often at the vanguard of change, but that doesn't mean it's always right. He realized that no one should have control over something as powerful as time itself. I now believe that's why he began to intentionally sabotage his own work. And it cost him his life. That's a reasonable conclusion. But if she's alive, where has she been? Where is she now? Well, she's about to make hell freeze over. Oh. Still ringing, Gran picked herself up off the ground. Through the dust and smoke, she looked over to see Mrs. Fratelli helping Hiram Tolliver to his feet. She'd had to beg, borrow, and steal to acquire those explosives. How many nights had she spent visualizing how she'd use them to make things right? And now, her one shot at destroying the source, that damned hole that swallowed so much of her life, was gone. Traded for this jagged hole in a wall and a foolhardy shot at rescuing Rollo. With Fratelli and Tolliver at her side, she stepped through. It was a strange feeling. <laughs> the last time she'd stalked this maze of hallways, it was in a different body. They quickly rounded a corner to find a group of clipboards guarding a door. Something worth guarding is probably something worth seeing. She leapt forward, brandishing her cane. If her last chance at vengeance for things lost was truly gone, she would just have to fight to keep what she still had. Yeah, Gran coming in clutch. <laughs> oh, damn. She went Bruce Wayne on the asses. Oh, right. The others as well. Gran, what are you doing here? Luca, what are you doing here? We're here to save Nelly. We're here to save Rolo. Hey, Mrs. Lucas, Gran. <laughs> That's awful nice of you, but I'm fine. Oh no, what did they? Rand, there's no time to explain. We have to go now. Come on, everyone. You got a party to crash. They made their way out from deep within perennial harvest, just as Solomon finished up his speech. Thankfully, we can dispense with the formalities from here on out. Solomon pulled a glass vial from his pocket. We've got to stop him. In one smooth motion, he downed its contents. A triumphant smile grew across Solomon's lips. No. Well, I guess that's it. We lost. Wouldn't be so sure about that. <laughs> With a mischievous look, Beck elbowed Luca. Remember when I had the vial behind my back? I tweaked his wonder potion with a little... I mean, I feel like any of these will help. I might have tweaked his wonder potion with a little change. Like pocket change? Your unlucky penny. Yeah, I plopped it in the vial when no one was looking. What's that going to do? No idea, that's the beauty of science. Now we observe. You can call me Sharper Valentine. To a belching green mist. <laughs> Holy crap, he's a baby! Yeah, but he's still sharper, right? What he was no longer matters. 
this is an innocent child. I apologize for all the harm my father has caused you. Awkwardly cradled the squirming child. She looked to her brother, her voice shaking with uncertainty. Augustus, what do we We do what Valentines always do. What must be done. I'll hurry home and prepare a crib for father, young Sharper. That would be a great help, thank you. Okay, everyone, the show is over. You may leave now. Epilogue. Beacon Pines coldest summer on record. Whew. Without much fanfare. I'm really curious what would have happened with the other stuff. I'm thinking those are alternate endings, maybe. We're left wanting. The new school year was ushered in by the falling leaves of autumn. After everything Luca, Rollo, and Beck had been through, middle school was bearable. <laughs> much they kindled a hope for a better future in their hearts when spring arrived farmers planted their crops with a sense of joy and optimism and as the dawn of the first day of summer came again its light slowly spread through the shallow valley it crept over the town square across the river past the neglected welcome sign and came to rest on a young boy sleeping at dawn his mind at peace knowing he is here for a reason hold on i gotta see i absolutely gotta see <laughs> where is it Does it all lead to the same ending? I need to know now. Might take long. <laughs> I I don't think so. I think you know this is like the very end. So <laughs> gotta see what these 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 will do. <laughs> junk. So let's see what this does. Cigar ash. Okay. <laughs> How did Ashes get into the vial? It was pretty easy to mess with the vial behind when it, it was behind my back. Okay, that's sneaky. Well, that's a bad habit anyways. I always said bad habits are like 50 yard field goals. Huh? Hard to kick. <laughs> you can call me Sharper Valentine. Alright. What happens with this? Oh my god! <laughs> well, that's one way to kick a bad habit. As the last of what was once Sharper Valentine wafted into the air, the crowd began to disperse, still numb from the Holy Jeff crap, he got Thanos snapped. Valentine was gone for good. His end would be a new beginning for Beacon Pines, a new chance to let go of the things they had lost and grab hold of a new future. The end. Well, I'd be lying if I said that wasn't a bit gratifying. If that feels to you like a good note to end on, I won't stand in your way. Ah, okay. So yeah, change is the true ending. So let's let's see the uh, the others, and then you know. Which, that makes sense, actually. Malice. The whiskey from his office? Yeah. Dude had unfinished glass on his desk. Feared his grow juice could use a little hair of the dog. His body... Yep, his body began to contort. Oh. Uh, Now that's what I call 80 proof whiskey. <laughs> Damn, dude. The crowd gazed in stunned silence at the now empty stage. The quiet was broken when William Kerr sprinted off stage and into the distance. He was never seen around Pines, or anywhere else for that matter, again. Watching the silhouette of Kerr disappear over the horizon, Luca began to laugh. 
first a low chuckle that became uncontrolled heaving laughter <laughs> through his tears. I can't then, believe that. The crowd had begun to laugh with him. The end. That was unexpected. Perhaps a bit of an absurd ending for my taste, but who am I to say? I'm only writing the damn thing. All right, now let's finally finish up the uh, true ending of, as it were. <laughs> Epilogue. Beacon Pines cold folks shared what they had. The new school year was after ever the chill they kindled when spring arrived. And as the dawn of the first day, his mind at peace, knowing he is here for a reason. Rolo, are you up yet? Roger that. It's a beautiful day at Mission Control. Are you going to swing by? Be there in a minute. Now, hopefully they were able to reverse the uh, effects on poor old Rolo. Time, Eleanor began moving Walt's old things out of the closet and into storage. Eleanor had moved back into her bedroom, and now that she wasn't sneaking out late... She even slept there most nights. Mom, I'm ready to go now. You go on without me, I'll meet you there. I've got a batch of jam to finish, darling. It's funny. I only started making jam as a way to send messages without anyone noticing. But now I enjoy it. I would... Well, I guess that means Rolo definitely hasn't been changed back. Nothing around here. Now I'm sure we have our final word for that fishing. Oh, the gravestone is no longer here. Interesting. Here you and Rolo have big plans for that little treehouse. Yeah, it started getting crowded after we revoked the max capacity one Rolo, one Luca rule. So we decided to expand, but at least we've got some help with that. How's the internship at Nelly and Ilona's shop going? It's been great. I'm hoping it helps me get into the School of Agriculture up at the state. Also, Nelly said she'd write a letter of recommendation, which could be huge. I just can't help but worry about leaving Rolo. He's grown up so fast, but he's still my little brother. Yeah, he had a heck of a growth spurt. I don't just mean grown literally. This morning he was up and finished his chores before I even had breakfast. Well, some of that might be his excitement about the treehouse renovations. Don't tell him this because it'll go to his head, but I'm really proud of that little punk. I'm sure he feels the same way, but he's just too dang proud to tell you. I know. So can't leave there. Okay. Hey Gus, how's the tree planting going? Couldn't be better. I'm so grateful to Lona and Nelly for letting me help. I just wasn't built to be a mayor. Too much bureaucracy. Gus, we finished cleaning up the sidewalks. What's next? Perennial harvest collapsed. Most of the clipboards skipped town, but some stuck around and dedicated themselves to making things right. Anyone with a knack for art can help paint new offices. You can count on us. Well, it looks like you really found your calling. I never really felt comfortable telling people what to do. Now this, right here. This is something I can be proud of. How's the nap been this morning? Most underrated part of a good nap is the view. And the view is getting greener every day. Nice. <laughs> I see you decided on a name. Yep, we had to clear out all the old stuff before putting on the final touch. Slow and Dirty Harvest is now official. I have 38 <laughs> points, Jesus. I like it. 
is actually Nelly's idea. There's a lot of work to do and the name serves as a reminder. Just because progress is important doesn't mean change should happen fast. In fact, I've learned that the more you care about something, the more important it is to take things slow. Our motto is go slow and fix things. Amen to that. <laughs> I better not dilly dally. Gotta get to the treehouse. Gotcha, gotcha. No need to see the rest of town. Luca, get this. I managed to reel in an actual fish this morning. Seriously? Yeah, and honest to goodness. Flip flopping, swim swamming fish. I don't think I've ever caught an actual fish here. It's been at least seven years since I've caught one. Say it's a good omen. What do you do with the fish? Oh, I released it back into the pond. Hoping to catch it again tomorrow. Oh, we never got the last word. Hmm. A little higher. Yep. A little lower. Yep. <laughs> a little higher. Yep. I'm telling you, the angle isn't the issue. We need more power to the radio. Luca, there you are. You tell him it's not the angle. Hey, I'm not in charge of antenna redesign. Fine, fine, Iggy, just don't do anything drastic until we get back. Who, me? Tish, you're in charge while I'm gone. Yep. That'll be fine, right? It'll be fine. We really want mission control to turn into something bigger and better. We have to loosen our grip a bit. <laughs> you're right. Lead the way. Oh, there we go. Now we can go out and explore. Whoops. Okay. <laughs> Young Mr. Van Horn. How's little Solomon or er, Sharper doing? Young Sharper seems to enjoy nature more than I. So, we do a lot of strolling these days. Has he, uh, you know... Attempted to crawl out of his crib and plot world domination? Yeah. Thankfully, no. I spoke at length with Dr. Mode Will, and she feels that Sharper's infant mind was not developed enough to retain his previous memories. For all intents and purposes, the child is unmolded clay. Let's hope he's a little nicer the second time around. That is the objective, yes. But really, all I can do is try and hope. Two activities I am endeavoring to find less distasteful. Well, I think you're doing a great job. And the whole town is ready to help out however we can. Can't wait to teach him to throw baseball. That would be... acceptable. <laughs> What's today's news that needs knowing? I'll give you tomorrow's headline today. Our old friend Patrick C. Montesquieu, aka William Kerr, just performed a stirring rendition of The Iceman Cometh at the State Correctional Facility. I hear there wasn't a dry eye in the house. I guess there's plenty of time to work on his craft. <laughs> what killed the dinosaurs? <laughs> I'm glad you swung by. More follow-up questions for your story? Nope, I got everything I need. Thanks again for that. Sent a draft of the story to the reporter in Capital City. And they offered me an internship. Of course they did. You're an amazing reporter. I don't know about all that. Story about a phony corporation that picked up an entire town of pet people, moved them to cover up a massive illegal mine shaft, full of incredible hazardous chemicals. Sort of writes itself if you think about it. Just don't forget us when you become a fancy big city reporter. Capital City isn't that far away. I'm going to have to come back from time to time to check in. See what sort of new trouble you've gotten yourself into. Sorry to disappoint, but my adventuring days are over. Ah, we both know that's not true. What makes you say that? Call it a reporter's intuition. Mrs. Fratelli glowed with a carefree smile. Is that your suitcase? That is two weeks of unencumbered tranquility. Excuse me? Would you be so kind as to take my order? Two weeks of sand, margaritas, and forgotten obligations. 
Excuse me? I'd love to place an order. <laughs> Just as soon as the lunch rush ends, I'll be a feather on the wind. You're going on vacation? For the first time in years. And I've got you and your mom to thank. Why is that? She didn't tell you yet. You two are going to fill in for me at the diner while I'm gone. Just like old times. It's fine. I'll wait. <laughs> Luca, do you want a biscotti? On the house. Did I just say biscot b biscotti? Yeah, biscotti. <laughs> I don't really have time. Zariel, you gotta come and see this. I finally did it. I pulled the perfect espresso. Ah, uh, Lumi. If I didn't know better, I would think you're proud of something. <laughs> As if I... No. It's too late. You are now officially a person that cares. <laughs> you had to care someday. Ah, uh, that theater's gone, thank god. Hey Luca, can you tell Roxy I'll be free in an hour? Sure thing. My dad's making me stock the shelves for the summer. He said it builds character. I think he meant to say it builds calluses. Builds character! Yep, yeah, builds something alright. Luca, can I interest you in a delicious apple? No thanks, just saying hello. <clears throat> well, hello then. Mind telling your mom we need a new crate of jam? Already? It's funny, I used to hide this stuff in the back. Terrified that someone would find out about our secret messages. Now everyone gets get their hands on Eleanor Van Horn's famous spy jam. <laughs> wow, back for seconds. If it's not too much trouble. For the longest time, I didn't understand the appeal of ice cream. There was no purpose other than to be briefly enjoyed, and then it's gone. Don't like... Don't like caring. <laughs> it's pretty tasty while it lasts. I'm inclined to agree. He looked to his friends with a thankful smile. After everything that could have gone wrong, everything that did go wrong, we made it. The end. I can't see it. Oh, hello, Luca. How are you? Really good, actually. That's wonderful. Did I miss anything? Uh, I think you're pretty much up to speed. <laughs> Did you know that when they covered up the source, they found a new species of fungus? Yeah, and they're studying it in the new labs. Did you know that? Beacon Pines is now the smallest town in the country? Or the county? Yep, close to the population before perennial harvest moved in. <laughs> Did you know? Can't believe it's over. Yeah, the town's really starting to turn a new leaf. The town? I was talking about Hank Atomic. I just finished the last issue. How was it? As great as always. Hank finally returned to Earth. I just feel weird now. Weird can be cool. Just means you're ready for something new. Any suggestions? You could ask Miss Hatch about what she's always reading. She seems to really enjoy it. Ah, maybe I'll do that. Piper, are you reading Hank Atomic? D do you mind not telling anyone? I kind of got a reputation to uphold. Oh, it's nothing to be ashamed of. Just about every kid in town reads Hank Atomic. Honestly, I'm excited for you. What I'd give to start over fresh. To experience it again for the first time. I guess that's the downside of finishing something nice. At least now I can enjoy it again through you. Promise to tell me about it as you go. Sure thing. Hey, I'm Mr. Nuncreed. I'm gonna go see my dad in a bit. Did you want to come with? 
Even after everything I did, you'd still... You really are your father's son, aren't you? I don't think I'm ready for that yet. Oh, you're always invited. I bet he'd love to hear from you. I'll visit Walt in my own time. You run along now. Get all these bunnies. With perennial harvest gone, the transportation tubes were left unused. Come on, come all. No one's too big, no one's too small. For Jeff's wild ride. <laughs> <laughs> Just one piece of candy for the ride of your life. Who's next? <laughs> Man's got free candy. Guess what? Yesterday I saw Dynasties to Titus. Titius. <laughs> and that's good? It's great! I haven't spotted one of those in years. At this rate, Beacon Pines is going to become the bug capital of the county. Maybe that means the bees have returned as well. Oh, nothing new around here. All it is is cleaned up now. I have news I think you'll enjoy. This morning I unpacked my last box. You're officially moved in. It's just a box. Let's not blow this out of proportion. Sounds an awful lot like putting down roots. I guess I decided this place is root worthy. You're gonna be stuck with me for the foreseeable future. I do have to warn you, most years aren't going to be as interesting as this one. I think I'll manage. Ready? Before we go, there's a bit of a surprise. My mom's prepared this tree especially for you. They didn't have to do that. It wasn't just them. Just about the whole town pitched in. We all owe you. Should do okay in the cold of old beacon pines. You thrive as things warm up. That's perfect. Let's go. Man. Jeff's wild ride we go. Ah, you got it. That's a good looking tree. Being a special occasion and whatnot. This ride's on the house. You're gonna want to hang on tight to that little tree. <laughs> Kooky old Jeff. Done. The good little tree. The best little tree. Thank you, children. This means a lot. Yeah, thanks for everything. Shucks, I only did what any super awesome best buddy would have done. We should probably give you some time alone now. You good? Yeah, I am. It's been a wild year. How are you feeling? Everyone keeps asking me that. I'm fine, really. Pa always says that the only thing fitter than a fiddle is a cello. I feel like a dang cello. Well, if you ever stop feeling like a cello, I'm here for you. I know, you don't even have to say it. You two make an awesome pair. Excuse me? We're a trio now. Yep. I... Thanks. There's just one thing missing now that you're a part of our group. Missing? Let me tell you a little story about a man named Hank Atomic. Oh, God. It won't be long. We'll be waiting for you back at the phone booth. I found the perfect way to start our summer. Got some good friends. 
I'm so proud of you. Your father would be so proud. I know. Mom, can I ask you a question? Do you ever dream about Dad? Not a night goes by that I don't. You ever afraid that you're going to forget him? Forget what he looked like? Forget his voice? No, because so much of him lives on in you. He loved that old tree, but I know he would love this one more. Because his two favorite people planted it. I'll give you two a moment. Hey, Dad. Dr. Modewell says that over the next few years, this place should warm up. So you won't have to be so cold for much longer. I think I finally understand why you left that night. There were things you believed in. Big things. Those beliefs were the things that made you, you. If you wouldn't have stood up to Sharper, stood up for what you believed in, you wouldn't have been in the same person anymore. You had to go. But that didn't mean you loved us any less. I might not visit you as much as I used to. I know you understand. Ooh, damn. Well, yeah, definitely, definitely went on a lot longer than I thought we had, you know, left, but I'm glad I stuck through it. Because this, this was, this was great. I got, um, pretty invested in it, so. Uh, I had a pretty good time. I noticed that. My stuff is wigging out a little bit. <laughs> wow, yeah, that, that mystery definitely had me hooked pretty, pretty good. <laughs> but, um, oh man. Now it's over, and I gotta say, Almost felt like, you know, finishing up like a show, you know? Like, uh... I don't know how to describe it, you know? Point is that that epilogue definitely felt earned. <laughs> In some ways, felt like the end of uh, Lord of the Rings for how long it seems to go for, but... It works. <laughs> the whole game worked pretty well. And uh, I'm really glad... I took the time to have this experience, and uh, like I said, these, these games I don't typically get into, so nice to stretch out from my comfort zone. Nice, a cozy time in Beacon Pines, although there was many, many fucked up things, and of course there was Nat, the mouse that seemed to be something of a an all-knowing thing that would lead to too many sequels <laughs> and um speaking of which i don't i don't think this game would ever need a sequel hopefully you know this is definitely this type of story that's like a one and done for sure but i'll definitely look out for the studio that did this for whatever their next project might be if it's something similar i'd be down Might be uh, another good mystery there as well. But uh, I guess I'll uh, just uh, wrap up here <laughs> since, you know, well, I, maybe there's an after credits, you know. Oh, no. Okay. Well, then uh, I hope everyone has enjoyed their time with Beacon Pines as I have. Hope everyone has a, a good evening. You know, this was a very long <laughs> stream. But, I, but, you know, lots of fun. Time flies. 
Uh, and I'll see you all tomorrow for some coffee talk. Uh, I'll have a good night or a good morning, wherever time zone you may be. And that'll be uh, me. Bye bye.